I found a planet. Chapter 1, The Mysterious Portal Top lane support needed. Hurry to the top and provide me with assistance. I'm in the top lane defending against four enemy champions. What are all of you doing? Please, stop messing around. Hurry to the top and provide assistance. The enemy has pushed forward onto our base, you guys still aren't coming back. Boom. The crystal nexus in his base exploded. A large fail floated up the computer screen. Damn. I've got a group of dumb teammates again. Chen Jin hit his keyboard in agitation. He had played LOL five times in a row today, and each time he had gotten noobs and dumb teammates. He had lost all five times and had blacklisted more than ten people. It was really terrible luck. Forget it, I'm not playing anymore. I always get the elementary students during the summer holidays. All of them are useless. There's no point in still playing. Switching off his computer, Chen Jin shook his head. He realized that the gaming experience was extremely horrible when it came to games that were active with lots of elementary students. Taking out his newly bought Twilight Colored Hawaii IP20 mobile, he lay on the hanging rattan chair and played a mobile game called Crash 3. Putting his favorite wife, Yi, into operation, he sadistically killed wave after wave of monsters as she panted lightly. Chen Jin, 24 and slightly handsome, was a homebody who loved gaming and anime the most. But he much preferred to call himself an anime body. He had bought many anime-themed and related items. For example, self-assembled figurines of Madoka, Asuna, and Rem, posters of Furuka and Nagisa, Katu Megami, and Gokururi, a PC wallpaper of Menma, a black silk bolster featuring Kasho Majayaka Yuta, and a t-shirt printed with King Saber. Such items were filling up every corner of his bedroom. As someone with a big heart, he called all of them wifey. Chen Jin was also part of the elderly devouring generation. There was nothing he could do about it. He could never work, not in this lifetime. The easy jobs paid so little he could not even support himself, while the good paying jobs were not easy to do, and the stress was too great to take. He could only stay at home and devour his elderly parents' money just like this. In addition, his family's situation was good. His dad was a high-ranking engineer in a state enterprise and his mom was a government branch official. Their old house had been demolished a few years ago, and the developer had offered six houses as compensation. As an only son, he had been spoiled by his mother since he was young. Actually, simply by looking at the self-assembled figurines, which were all based on characters from the two-dimensional world, crammed into the three levels of his bedside drawer, one could tell that he had the ability to devour the elderly. Moreover, with his current single status, he could be rated as an eligible bachelor. He played his mobile game for more than an hour. Putting down his cell phone, Chen Jin rubbed his aching and swollen eyes. Feeling the urge to pee, he put aside his mobile and walked towards the bathroom. As it was an end suite, it was very convenient to go to the bathroom. Click. Opening the bathroom door, Chen Jin was immediately stunned. The toilet bowl, which was placed directly in front of him and could be promptly utilized after taking down his pants, was now unusable. A translucent circle of light floated above the toilet bowl, emitting a gentle fluorescent glow. What is this? Could it be a hallucination caused by gaming for too long? Rubbing his eyes a few times, Chen Jin looked with a fixed stare. The translucent circle of light was still floating there. A portal from another dimension, or, a sheet of glowing stickers, with the purpose of pranking me. April Fool's Day was long past. If that was the case. Raising his fist and lifting his brows, Chen Jin adopted a slightly arrogant tone. There is only one truth. Fist of the one and only profound truth, break it. He swung his fist towards the translucent circle of light. Immediately, a strange expression came over his face. The pain that he expected never came. On the contrary, his right arm sank deeply into the circle of light with no resistance, with faint ripples appearing on the surface. Chen Jin's eyes instantly grew wide. Then, he took his hand out put it back in and did it all over again more than ten times. It was almost like he was masturbating his own atrophied arm. Taking his hand out for the final time, he said with gleaming eyes, so it really is a portal to another dimension. Even I, a carefree homebody who stays in all day and has no worries over food or clothing, can get a gold finger dropped onto my lap. Lord in heaven, you are too good to me. It is the poor who need this the most. Chen Jin was ecstatic. He actually received an explosion of luck immediately after losing five games in a row today. Speaking of which, what would lie beyond the portal? 
a fantasy world of magic or a dimension of the gods. A post-apocalyptic planet filled with zombies or the so-called training battlefield for paranormals. No matter what laid beyond, there was one thing that he is 100% sure of, this time, he definitely hit the jackpot. But, suppressing the excitement inside him, Chen Jin planned to cautiously probe the world lying beyond the portal. First, he took a rope and tied it around his Hawaii IP20 mobile. After turning on the HDR video recording, he slowly put it into the portal and shot an HD video segment. The video showed a monotonous scene that was just like the flat surface of a mirror. Almost as if it was a piece of translucent glass. The shot would occasionally sweep across a scene of a sand-clouded sky. A world that is a wasteland. Again, he put his hand inside the portal. Feeling the temperature of the environment over there, he realized that it was within the normal range of 20 plus degrees. Can the air there be inhaled directly? Chen Jin took a bottle of mineral water from the fridge. Twisting off the cap, he poured away the water inside. Then he tied a rope to it and put it into the portal. Ten minutes later, he lifted the bottle out and leaned his nose close to the mouth of the bottle. Twitching the sides of his nose, he smelled the air from the other world. No strange smells that irritate the nose, a whiff of sand and dust, contains oxygen, too. It should be breathable. Okay. There was no need to do other experiments. He could hold his breath and just stick his head in to see. So long as his face did not get torn off instantly, he could take a look at the landscape in the other world. With this thought in mind, Chen Jin knelt on the ground and half supported himself with two hands on the toilet lid. Adopting a somewhat vulgar pose, his head slowly extended towards the translucent circle of light. The top of his head went in first, followed by half a forehead, then the eyes, nose, mouth until his whole head was totally submerged inside the circle of light. Opening his eyes, he took in as much as he could of the landscape from the other dimension. A huge crater. The first thing he saw was the biggest crater ever. Its spherical shape was extremely uniform. On the surface of the spherical crater was glass of a dense and thick color, which was the result of melted sand. Chen Jin immediately thought of explosions caused by nuclear weapons. The sky was overshadowed by the sand as far as the eye could see, and the rays of light were dim, making it difficult to be certain of the sun's position. The air was indeed breathable, but it was very dry, carrying a much stronger scent of dust. He could hear the whoosh of the wind passing by his ears and feel the movement and temperature of the air on his face. The wilderness carried with it a sense of tranquility. Opening his eyes wide, Chen Jin took a sweeping glance of his surroundings and imprinted it on his mind. Quietly, he told himself, this world is mine. The same day, through various channels, Chen Jin bought a great number of specialized items. He bought, a hazmat suit, a filter mask, hiking shoes, a metal walking staff, a big backpack, a small backpack, a bivy, a field tent, windproof goggles, binoculars, thick gloves, a torch, a compass, a canteen, a Swiss army knife, a windproof lighter, and other necessary equipment for an outdoor expedition. Furthermore, he purchased a radiation dosimeter, a gravimeter, and a portable air monitoring device, as well as other measuring equipment for the physical world. Purchasing all the items cost Chen Jin a total of more than 50,000 RMB. As someone with only a little income, he had spent all the savings that he had. Chapter 2, I Found a Piece of Metal Scrap Three days later, the majority of the items that Chen Jin purchased had arrived and were placed on a big pile on the ground. Today, I can go over there to explore. He had prodded the portal in the bathroom for a good few days. During that time, he never played a single game, and never watched even one anime episode. The character of a homebody had vanished in an instant. If it was not because of safety considerations, he would have already gone to the new world. Now that the equipment was basically all there, the first thing to do was to put on the most important hazmat suit, giving him the ability to protect against radiation. This outfit was a little heavy, rather awkward, and came with a very ugly filter mask that looked like a pig's snout. But it was impossible not to wear this. The spherical crater behind the portal made him think of nuclear explosions, which in turn was associated with nuclear radiation. Nuclear radiation was too scary, it caused people to suffer from various cancers. When too much radiation has accumulated inside the body, death is a 100% certainty. Besides protecting himself from radiation, he also had to consider if the air on the other side contained any toxins and if there were any fatal organisms and viruses. Anyway, it was not a big mistake to be cautious and prudent. Being careless would lead him to AGG. 
that was the conclusion that Chen Jin came to after many years of playing RPG games. After putting on the hazmat suit and the filter mask, Chen Jin first put a few things into the portal. Hanging them on a hook, he squeezed it into the other world. For example, the bivy, tent, the big backpack filled with snacks and mineral water, and the tools placed inside two other small backpacks, were all stuffed into the portal in one shot. Then, he lowered down a length of safety rope measuring about 5 meters. One end of the safety rope was attached to a trestle in the bedroom. The trestle was stuck between the upper areas of the two walls in the bathroom. The stability factor was very high. The other end of the safety rope stretched through the portal and hung suspended from a height of about 3 meters from the ground. It was not very high, but he would definitely injure his leg in a fall if he jumped down directly. He must use the support of the rope to descend smoothly. However, Chen Jin also lowered a chair down into the portal, reducing the distance from the ground. He had also bought a 3 meters collapsible A-frame metal ladder online, but it was yet to be delivered. For now he could only make use of the safety rope. Let's go. Dragging the safety rope in both hands, with a slight tremble in his body, he stepped onto the toilet bowl and put his legs through, followed by his bottom and waist, sinking into the portal. A change finally occurred in the center of gravity, a rush of power from the other world came pulling, causing his body to tumble helplessly into the portal until he disappeared from the bathroom. The other world. It was still the same old scenery of a sand-covered sky. Stepping steadily onto the red-painted chair, Chen Jin's entire body was in this world for the first time. He took out some measuring instruments from his small backpack and conducted a series of surveys on his physical environment. A gravity count of 9.81, basically the same as Earth's. The nuclear radiation strength has a daily measurement of 15.6 microsievert, which is 10 times the natural background radiation of Earth. Damn, this world really is a world after a great nuclear war. But, this radiation strength was not considered very high it would not cause too great a damage to the human body. It would be harmful only if the body received a dose totaling over 100 millisievert, MSV, in a short period of time. And 100 millisievert equaled 100,000 microsievert, which was the radiation of this world increased by 17.5 times. Only then would it cause some damage to Chen Jin. So, he could totally take off his hazmat suit. However, for the purpose of security, he reconsidered and did not take it off. The radiation of this area was within safety limits, but what about other places? What if other places had a strong radiation source? He would die. Oxygen makes up 19% of the air, this is in the lower end of the normal standard, carbon dioxide is 0.12%, which is three times that of Earth. The greenhouse effect is at a critical level. Level of microorganisms in the air is sparse, with a matching 15% humidity. This is a highly dry and arid climate. After conducting various data tests, Chen Jin came to a conclusion, one is able to survive. Although there were a few numbers that were bad, under normal circumstances, humans could survive in this world. A situation where one would suddenly die with a loud bang would not happen. Of course, before he can be truly considered safe here, Chen Jin still had to confirm that the surrounding areas were safe as well, no large animals, corpses, humanoid robots and slash or other unknown threats. He had brought a baseball bat and a Swiss army knife with him. The physique of a homebody is unsurprisingly weak. If he met with a strange and powerful animal, his first response would be to run, hurry and run. Other things did not matter, his own puny life was the top priority. Surveying his surroundings, Chen Jin planned to explore the periphery. The entire surface of the crater has been melted into glass, there is nothing here. Let's see what I can find by exploring the periphery. A problem appeared in front of him. The crater was a bit on the large side and he was in the center of it. If he wanted to walk out of the crater to the peripheral location, he would need to walk for at least 4 to 5 kilometers. That was not a short distance. Using a normal walking speed, it would take about an hour. It was so far away, should he go? Chen Jin thought of his Windrunner electric scooter that he spent a whopping $5,000 on. It had a maximum speed of 75 km per hour and could travel for 120 km. Should I bring over the Windrunner? He raised his head and took a look at the safety rope dangling over his head from the portal. Forget it, I'll bring the Windrunner over tomorrow putting on a lighter small backpack and holding onto the metal walking staff, he set forth with some clumsiness in this desolate, dim and yellow-tinted world. The journey of 5 km took him a full hour to complete. In addition, he had to climb up slopes which made him pant with exertion. 
but it was within his tolerable limits, barely. At the periphery, he climbed out of some uneven round pits. Standing on the surrounding area of the circular and empty pits, Chen Jin halted and looked back, taking in as much of the huge crater as he could through his eyes. This is the result of an explosion from at least 5 million tons of nuclear bombs, or its equivalent. Turning back again, he looked at the surroundings around the pits. Looking at the scenery in front of him, Chen Jin still wanted to use this word to describe it, desolate. Other than the mass of rock-covered desert and the sand-dotted sky, there was no trace of existence of any animals or plants. What his ears could only hear was the whoosh of the wind. It was stronger here than at the crater's bottom. Sometimes it blew so strongly that he could hardly stand. Chen Jin decided to move forward and explore a small distance, with no intention of going too far, and see if he could find something rewarding. He lowered his head and looked at the ground. From his black and white vision through the windproof filter goggles he saw rocks, big and small rocks, it was all rocks. He could barely see anything other than rocks. The scene, he felt, was utterly drab. After walking forward for about one kilometer, Chen Jin decided to turn back as he thought he would not find anything valuable. Lifting his wrist and looking at the time on his waterproof watch, he saw that it would be night in two hours. He would have to hurry back. Suddenly, from the corner of his eyes, Chen Jin caught a glint of light from a metallic source. What is that? He walked towards the glimmering light. After walking for about 15 meters, he found a piece of metal scrap in the center of a pile of rocks. The material of the scrap metal seemed to be made of some type of steel component. Chen Jin used all his strength to rub and pinch it a couple of times to no effect. The scrap metal had a very irregular shape, ripple-like curves and the appearance of an amoeba. Almost as if it suffered a violent hit. Taking out the radiation measuring device, he measured the radiation level of the scrap metal and found out that the numbers had no change. There was no radioactive remnant. Thus, Chen Jin kept the scrap metal in the side pocket of his backpack. Turning around, he went back to the bottom of the crater. Just before night descended, he took off his awkward and heavy protective suit. After folding it, he threw it into the wind and rainproof tent and put it together with the other items, building a makeshift little camping ground. Lastly, after putting on his regular clothing, he grabbed the safety rope with both hands. Using the movable sports buckle tied around his waist, he got back to his room with only a little effort. Chapter 3, I Found a Robot Trash Collector Windrunner, did you miss your master? From a cupboard on the balcony that was filled with various sundry items, Chen Jin took out the long unused electric scooter that was covered in a significant amount of dust. Murmuring to himself, he dusted off the scooter. He bought this scooter last year, when mom arranged a job for him as a city management officer in the western district. The job was a little far away so he bought this windrunner as a means for his daily commute. In the end, he quit his job as a city management officer after two months. Also, he usually stayed at home and hardly went out. Hence, there was little use for the windrunner and he dumped it in the sundry cupboard to collect dust. But now. Windrunner, master has never forgotten you. Your mission and destiny to conquer the other world with me has arrived, the time in your life for you to shine the brightest has arrived. After wiping away the dust, the windrunner displayed a burnished, glossy appearance similar to that of a highly polished piano. Together with its two muscular wheels spanning a large diameter, it radiated a domineering air of glory. At that moment, he felt like he should add a segment of explosive, high-energy background music. Windrunner was small and dainty, with only the largest measurement of 110 cm in reality, and a weight of less than 25 kg. It could be squeezed inside a guitar bag after collapsing it. Even so, it was still domineering and tough. After charging it for half a day, Chen Jin hurried back down to his bedroom and locked the door after having his dinner upstairs in the evening. Gathering up the fully charged windrunner, he climbed along the safety rope into the other world. From his observations in the past few days, Chen Jin noticed a regularity, when it was 8 p.m. here on Earth, it just so happened to be dawn in the other world, and when it was twilight there, it was coincidentally dawn on Earth. As luck would have it, the time there was the reverse. This was very beneficial for his exploration of the other world. He could sleep during the day and explore the other world at night. If he did not say anything about not sleeping at night, his parents would not find out what he was doing. As for sleeping at night, was a homebody a creature that slept at night? Perhaps the quality of sleep during the day was better? And he could have sweet pleasant, day, dreams. The other world. At the bottom of the huge crater, 
the makeshift little camping ground was still the same, with no trace of disturbance. Chen Jin pulled open the tent. Taking out the hazmat suit, he put it on and donned his filter mask as well as the small backpack that he had carried yesterday. He helped Windrunner get into a standing position and put both feet on it. Using some adhesive tape, he fixed the radiation dosimeter onto the top front of the scooter. With two hands on the handles and a twist of his right hand on the switch, Windrunner's two wheels spun faster, quickly picking up speed. The greatest speed was 75 kilometers and it could go up slopes of up to 55 degrees. It was no joke. The saying spur your horse on, gallop as fast as you can and enjoy the vivacity of human life must be referring to this particular feeling. This time around, as he whizzed crazily like the wind, Chen Jin arrived at the top of the huge crater's periphery within five to six minutes. However, after entering the barren desert area, the ground was highly uneven and littered with a huge amount of loose rocks. It became difficult for Windrunner as its undercarriage was too low. Many parts of the desert were too bumpy, it was practically impossible to ride Windrunner continuously on this type of terrain. He could only walk some and then ride some. But for now, Chen Jin had no intention of exploring too far. He planned to first familiarize himself with the peripheral areas by circling the huge crater once. After which, he would extend his exploration towards the outer areas surrounding it. This was similar to the strategy games that he played such as Age of Empires, Stronghold, Civilization, Red Alert, etc. Based on the maps, one always started by probing the peripheral areas. Of course one had to go to the faraway places, but resolving the mysteries and battles in the periphery took precedence. Within his black and white vision from his windproof filter goggles, he saw rocks and more rocks. Basically everything that he saw before were all rocks. The radiation dosimeter tied to the front of the scooter showed that there was basically no change to the radiation data. Suddenly, again, a speck of light flitted past the corner of his eye. He went over to take a look, and found a pull-top can. The can was empty with some trace of food at the bottom. It was yellowish like peanut butter. The surface of the kin was printed with some kind of unreadable words that were extremely similar to English. However, it seemed to have a Latin style. Anyway, it was a language that was in between the two of those. It should be a kin of peanut butter, there's a picture of a peanut plant on the front. Since this world was able to mass-produce cans made of this type of light alloy material, it means that civilization here has reached a level similar to that of the Second Industrial Revolution, if not higher. There was no value in keeping the pull-top kin. Hence Chen Jin casually threw it aside. He continued to move forward. Chen Jin made more discoveries. He found a broken doll. By pressing its nose, it could sing a happy melodious song. The doll was kept inside in a red, blue and white striped woven plastic bag, aka snakeskin bag, that he brought along with him. He intended to take it back and study it. He found a refrigerator-like home equipment that was junk. Its outer shell was severely damaged and the internal parts were exposed. It was impossible to repair it. He found a plastic product. It was a toothbrush with bristles that were worn bald. He found a worn-out book. Two-thirds of it was damaged, only the content on the top corners could be read. He found a torn shirt. He found a pair of torn pants. He found a bra with only one side intact. He found one worn-out shoe. Chen Jin realized that the further he walked towards the outer areas, the more items he could find with a richer variety and with greater frequency. He even saw a utility wagon that was lying inverted on the ground. There were various metal scraps and parts, so many of them that he could not pick them all up. Not too far ahead, there appeared to be a metal rubbish bin lying on its side on the ground. The shape of the rubbish bin was severely warped. Lying on the ground beside it was a radio device with an antenna and two speakers. A radio. Walking over, he grabbed the radio and placed it in front of his eyes. With a happy expression, he exclaimed, it looks whole, I wonder if it's usable. The style of the radio was very old-fashioned. With its big and blocky size, it felt similar to the radios from Earth in the 50s or 60s. Chen Jin noticed that there was a cassette tape in the radio. After pressing the on-off switch on the radio, the tape was still unable to play. Apparently, there was a fault in the radio. But it was okay, he could go back and try to fix the radio. If he could not fix it, he would just buy a voice recorder from the internet, and hear what was on the cassette. Anyway, this was a significant gain. He kept the radio in his snakeskin bag. Swish. He heard a sound by his ears. Chen Jin was shocked. Who is it? 
he instantly looked around and became hypervigilant, trying to find the source of the sound. Shuffle. Again came a similar noise. Chen Jin turned around and stared at the rubbish bin beside him the strange noise came from inside. Clunk. The noise came again. It was as if there was something struggling within the rubbish bin. Chen Jin was conflicted. Should I go take a look? He was very curious. But if he met with danger? Wah wah. Wah wah. He heard two cries coming from the rubbish bin, one after the other. Wah wah, it's a crying sound? Could it be? There's a baby inside. Chen Jin was somewhat panicked. Is it possible for the baby in the rubbish bin to survive in such circumstances? He lowered his guard and went towards the rubbish bin. Kneeling in front of it, he tightly grabbed the sides of the bin with both hands and using all his strength, flipped over what was possibly 100 plus kilograms of trash metal. Exposing the mouth of the bin that was flat on the ground, he directed his gaze inside and looked to see if there was a baby within. None. Besides the rubbish inside, it was more rubbish. Chen Jin shook his head. Seems like I was having an auditory hallucination then. Suddenly, a rubbish inside shifted, waving two limbs, it struggled to climb out of the rubbish bin. Chen Jin was shocked. He fixed his stare on it. The trash metal in front of him was a robotic device. Its head was composed of two cameras placed together. The body was square, two mechanical arms that were similar to an excavator bucket stretched out from its shoulders. Its legs consisted of two triangular-shaped metal propulsion belts. It had a sort of mottled rust-colored appearance. However, the appearance of this rubbish was somewhat pitiful. Its right camera eye was broken and pulled out, the propulsion belt on its left leg was gone and missing two gears. It could only use the support of its right propulsion belt and its two mechanical arms to crawl forward. Wah wah! Wah wah! It climbed in front of Chen Jin and a clear grey mechanism within its left camera eye blinked a few times. A childish and tender baby noise was emitted from its chest where a row of green lights flickered. Chen Jin's eyes almost popped out. This. He found a robot trash collector. Chapter 4, The Robot Wawa. Since it could talk and move, that meant that the robot trash collector that in front of him could not be called rubbish. But was it a threat, did it have an aggressive nature and would it cause harm to humans? Chen Jin conducted two little tests. He took out the baseball bat from the side pocket of his backpack and lightly tapped its body a couple of times. It did not make any defensive or retaliatory move, only twisted its cameras and gave him a strange look. Hi, hello. Chen Jin waved his hand in greeting. Wah wah, wah wah the robot immediately executed a reply. He waved his hand, how are you? It waved its mechanical arm too. Wah wah. Chen Jin extended his hand towards it. Let's shake hands. Click clack it extended its mechanical arm as well. The three metal pieces on the tip of its arm opened up, grasping the ends of Chen Jin's glove and shaking like how it would shake his hand. Damn, what a high level of intelligence. Chen Jin was stunned. The robot responded to everything that he said to it. Just by stretching his hand, it could quickly comprehend what he meant. With the current level of technology on Earth, there was no way it could produce robots of such high intelligence. His judgment of this world's level of technological advancement immediately improved it was leading Earth by at least few decades. Chen Jin murmured, this world definitely is not an undeveloped one, on the contrary it's very advanced and very prosperous. As for the trash robot looking up at him from his feet, Chen Jin had basically confirmed that it should be friendly towards him. Even if it was not a friendly robot and an evil one, Chen Jin was confident that he could destroy ten of such robots without much problems using the baseball bat in his hands. After all, its size was smaller than a backpack. For example, he could just knock out both its camera eyes and it would be blinded instantly. What was there to be afraid of? Chen Jin decided to keep this robot. It was just that it had sustained severe damage, and he needed to repair it. Chen Jin studied mechanical engineering for three years in the university, so he definitely had a basic understanding of mechanical repair. However he spent most of his time playing games and only scheming some of the necessary content. But there was one point that definitely worked when a machine is broken because it was missing some parts, simply replace the parts with functional ones. Following that idea, he rummaged through the rubbish bin for a while and poured out all the trash. As expected, he found a broken caterpillar track as well as two loose inducers. He could fix the two gears on the robot, but unless he welded together the broken parts of the propulsion belt, it was useless. As for the broken right eye camera, he had to find a new one and replace it. Therefore, 
the primary goals in the next part of Chen Jin's exploration was to find a whole, unbroken propulsion belt and a functional right camera. The trash robot who could still move, albeit with great difficulty, followed behind him the whole way. Chen Jin realized that he had a good conversational companion after finding out that it could understand part of what he said. He even gave this trash robot a name. W.A.W.A., can you mimic how I speak? W.A.W.A., could it be that your vocal unit is only capable of making the syllable wa-wa? It cannot vocalize more complicated words? W.A.W.A., let's hear you call me master. Powerless, powerless. As expected, the trash robot who Chen Jin had named W.A.W.A. said a different word. But what it expressed was insufficient power. On its chest was a row of tiny lights that continuously flickered red. It walked more sluggishly, slowly losing pace with Chen Jin. You're almost out of battery. Noticing that there was something peculiar about Wawa, -wa, Chen Jin quickly grabbed it and put it on the deck of his scooter. He fixed it firmly on the deck using a length of rope. To prevent it from toppling over, he tried his best to drive in a steady manner. Sometimes the terrain was uneven, and he had to slow down the scooter. Walking along while carrying a rubbish-filled nylon poly bag and hauling the scooter with Wawa -wa on it had caused his speed to decrease, not to mention increasing his burden at the same time. At 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Using a total of about 8 hours, Chen Jin had completed one round of exploration around the surrounding areas of the huge crater. The total travel distance exceeded 40 kilometers, with one-third of the journey undertaken on foot. Right now both his legs were swollen. His body felt as heavy as lead which was very uncomfortable. But the gains were good. Luckily, besides the snakeskin bag of rubbish, he also found a spare camera to replace Wawa's right one. It had fallen off from another robot, the outer appearance was whole and undamaged. As he did not find an unbroken caterpillar track, he intended to bring the broken one back to Earth. It should be fixed without too much trouble by getting a master welder to weld it together. By now, the robot WAWA was completely out of power and had went into sleep-slash-standby mode. Chen Jin still had to think of a way to recharge it. It's time to go back, I found a full bag of rubbish and also a robot. That's quite some gains. At this moment, Chen Jin had never felt so exhausted. He only wanted to go back and get a good rest. Thus he drove Windrunner onto the smooth inside of the huge crater, and making use of the steep ups and downs of the terrain, Windrunner's speed very quickly rose to over 80 km per hour. Chen Jin did not dare to turn the switch to further increase the speed. He even had to apply the brakes to reduce the speed. About four minutes later, he was back in his little camping ground at the bottom of the crater. The collapsible metal A-frame ladder had arrived, Chen Jin stepped on it and returned to the bathroom on Earth. He took a long shower in the bathroom to wash away the stinky sweat. Wearing a pair of shorts, he walked out. Looking at the portal above the toilet, he pulled a cord and drew out a curtain hanging on it, cleverly shielding the portal. In this way, no matter who entered his bathroom and used its facilities, as long as they were not searching with a purpose, they would not discover the existence of the portal with only a passing glance and Chen Jin had no intention of telling anyone about the existence of the portal. Including his parents. There was no particular reason. He simply did not want the appearance of the portal to disrupt the happy and peaceful life at home or to attract unnecessary trouble. The risk inherent in the other world was something that he rather face alone. That was a world that belonged to him including the sole enjoyment of it and he did not wish to share it with anybody else. Let's just take it as a type of console game where I am the only player. Falling heavily onto his bed and hugging his Kashumajayaka Utah bolster, an extremely tired Chen Jin quickly entered a deep sleep. Open the door. Bang, bang, bang. Son, get up for lunch already, hurry and open the door. Son, son. If you're still not opening the door, I'm going to let your dad break down the door or force the lock. Standing at the entrance, He Li felt somewhat anxious. She had been knocking on his door all morning to no avail hence she let him continue sleeping. However, how could he still not open the door when it was already 12 p.m.? He did not pick up even after she called him more than 10 times. Could it be? Her son had died a sudden death after gaming through the night? At this point, He Lee immediately panicked. Turning around, she moved towards the corridor outside the living room, intending to take out the firefighter's axe and break the door down. Click. Just when she decided to get the axe, the door opened. A bare-shouldered Chen Jin rubbed his eyes furiously and asked with some impatience, Mom, what's the matter that you are yelling at me to get up so early? Early? 
It's already 12 p.m. What were you doing last night? Why are you only getting up now? Usually, you don't even lock your door, why did you lock it today? He Lee asked a string of questions. Mom, don't ask so much. I went to exercise last night, I over-exercised and did not get a good rest. Exercise. Instantly, she came upon a realization. Smiling, she said, so you found a girl to have fun with. Do you like her? Son, it's good to be young but everything has to be done in moderation. Chen Jin could not be bothered to answer. Mom, I'm so hungry, is there something delicious to eat? His stomach was starting to growl. Yes, lunch is ready. Wash your face and go eat. Son, you look so weak, you really need to nourish yourself. Seeing his skinny frame with his ribs showing under his chest, He Li could not help but shake her head. Chapter 5, The Silly Wawa Today was Saturday part of a two-day weekend, and both parents were resting at home. Looking at Chen Jin climbing up the stairs with an appearance of having just woken up, his father, Chen Gang who was currently eating, felt such anger suffusing him. Pinching his glasses and with furrowed brow, he glared at Chen Jin. Just look at what you've become, sleeping until 12 p.m. All you know is to hole up in your room and play games every day. You're already 24, if you continue down this road, what use can you be? How did I have such a son like you? Dad was getting ready to lambast his son. As a senior engineer and a core technical member of his team, he saw his colleagues' children either earning a big salary or going to study abroad. As for his own son, he was actually staying home and devouring the elderly. Fearing to reveal this fact, he could only tell others that his son had found a good position as a professional, was earning a good salary, and had a stable career. Chen Jin did not dare to talk back. He only quietly sat down, picked up his bowl and chopsticks, and got ready to eat. Conversely, He Li immediately shielded Chen Jin behind her back, put her hands on her waist and counter-attacked, get lost. I gave birth to this son, I will arrange his affairs, I don't need your interference. You shut your mouth. You will arrange his affairs? Can you do it for his whole life? Allow him to devour us his whole life. Chen Gang had raised this question countless times, and countless times only received the same kind of reply. Unperturbed, He Li said, So what if our son devours the elderly? I am willing and happy about it. I can care for him his entire life. You. Chen Gang pointed at her and sighed, A kind mother ruins her son. Chen Jin had scooped a bowl of pork rib soup for himself and was wolfing it down. He Li's expression was one of happiness, picking up a piece of chicken thigh and placing it in his bowl, she said, Come, son have some more meat to replenish your body. Thanks mom. Arg. Seeing this scene, Cheng Gang shook his head again. After lunch, Chen Jin displayed some initiative by squirreling into the kitchen to help mom wash the dishes. Then, he pulled her aside and with some hesitation asked, Mom, there is something I want to discuss with you. Giving him a look, He Li took out the mobile phone from her purse. She raised her chin and asked, Talk, how much money do you want me to transfer to you this time? Chen Jin gave a chuckle and patted her shoulder, Mom, you're still the one who understands me the best. He Li crinkled her eyes comfortably, Nonsense, you came out of my belly. I know what kind of fart you are going to make once you stick out your bum. Would this kid usually think of helping her wash the dishes? This. It's not a lot, just give me $20,000. Okay, but you have to promise Mom one thing find a girlfriend that you really fancy within three months. Chen Jin patronizingly said, Um, I'll try my best. Frankly speaking, with his qualities, he could easily shed his singlehood. It would be even easier than eating and drinking. However, he currently had no plans in that regard. Widening her eyes, He Li said with a pensive tone, Son, you're not young, it's about time you start considering marriage. You can still play around now, but if you don't form your own family soon and let me hold my grandchildren before I retire, you should know the consequences that will follow. He Li was rightly dubbed the classic kind mother. But she would never truly ruin her own son. Ever since he was young, she had her own method of discipline and teaching, with her own expectations regarding his progress. Of course, her standards are much lower as compared to other parents. But she had always guarded her bottom line and guided Chen Jin's development on the trajectory that she had determined. The steering wheel was firmly under her control. Chen Jin could do all these very well, for example, preparing meals, washing the dishes, 
keeping the house clean, maintaining one's personal hygiene, being well-spoken, cultured, and well-mannered. In front of relatives and friends, Chen Jin gave an overall impression of being low-key and well-mannered. Even behind his back, others still talk decently of him. Nobody knew that he was a die-hard homebody and part of the elderly devouring generation. Of course, all these were due to He Li's fitting educational efforts. He could tell that Mom seemed to be formulating plans to make him fall for her tricks. Chen Jin's forehead slightly beaded with sweat. Nodding his head, he said, Yes, I understand, Mom. Ding $20,000 has been deposited into your Alipay account from Mother. Seeing this message, Chen Jin shook his head and muttered, It's best to not ask money from Mother. This money. Holding it scalds my hand. In the afternoon, Chen Jin went to an area near Happiness Court and found a small goldsmith shop specializing in making aluminium doors and windows. He asked for the boss of the shop and showed him the broken propulsion belt. They negotiated a price of $200 in exchange for the boss's help in repairing it. The boss was a worldly middle-aged man in a chatterbox. You are a hobbyist of miniature military models right? This propulsion belt is really well crafted. You want to install it on a tank model? I'm telling you. $200 is not a lot for this. The smaller the item, the harder it is to weld it, and its operational requirements is even more demanding. It's lucky that I used to work on a shipyard for a few years. I can't boast that I'm the best when it comes to welding techniques, but this tiny little belt is not difficult for me at all. Hey, what's up with this? I've been welding for so long, how did the welding spot show no sign of melting, the steel is not even red. Holding his mask in his hands, the boss was surprised. I'll change to a high heat welding rod and try again. Taking out the high heat welding rod, he welded for a long time. Even with a temperature of 2400 plus degrees, the material of the areas where the belt was broken merely glowed red but did not melt. Damn, what kind of steel has a melting point of over 2000 degrees? It's just a propulsion belt from a toy model, just what kind of material is it made of? The middle-aged boss was aghast and embarrassed to the point of anger. It was just a toy propulsion belt and it thought it could pose an obstacle to him, a senior welder. He took a rarely used gas welder, and using a temperature of over 3000 degrees produced by combusting ethylene in pure oxygen, finally claimed victory over this toy propulsion belt. The broken metal segments of the belt finally started to melt and eventually reconnected. The broken propulsion belt was successfully repaired. Besides repairing the propulsion belt, Chen Jin also bought a batch of electrical wires. After getting home, he pulled a piece of electrical wire from his bedroom through the portal and into the other world. In addition, he bought a small voltage transformer to convert the more dangerous household voltage of 220V to a safer range of 6V, 12V and 24V. After arranging the circuit route, he separated the two copper wires extending from the transformer, one red and one blue, into positive and negative terminals. Then, he plugged both wires into two tiny holes located on the robot's backside that seemed to be charging terminals. Adding power, came a notification sound. Of the row of lights located on Wawa's chest, the one on the extreme left started to flash red, signaling that it was charging. Chen Jin finally stopped worrying. As this was a convenient time to do it he also installed the now functional propulsion belt. As for the damaged right camera eye, Chen Jin had already replaced it. After having dinner on Earth, he once again returned to the bottom of the huge crater. The robot Wawa had just been charged to a level of power sufficient for it to wake up from its sleep mode. Then, Chen Jin saw this. As it successfully switched on, a notification sound could be heard. The two drooping camera eyes skittered around as they lifted up. With a clicking sound, it alternatively raised and lowered its left and right eye. Within its elliptical vision from the cameras, it saw Chen Jin standing in front of it. Beep beep. The clear grey mechanisms within its camera eyes blinked twice. Its eyes glimmered upon seeing the repaired propulsion belt on its left leg. Wawa, Wawa. It was most excited. Twirling its mechanical arms and breaking free of the charging cable behind it, it circled Chen Jin who was standing in front of it. Clack 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 it turned a few rounds clockwise. Clack 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 it turned a few rounds anti-clockwise. Then, it ran back and forth, all the while shouting, Wawa, Wawa. Chen Jin was extremely amused by its antics. Pointing his finger at it, he said, Haha, Wawa, you're so silly. Suddenly, Chen Jin's eyes bulged out. He saw Wawa run to the small voltage transformer, extend its mechanical arms and with a some clanging, 
took down the household cable that was connected to the transformer. It grabbed a section of copper wires with the metal components that made up both ends of its arms. The sizzling electrical current was accompanied by a large amount of sparks. With direct access to the household circuit of 220V, it started charging itself. It was still convulsing non-stop. Chen Jin was so shocked he almost cried out. The row of tiny red lights on Wawa's chest was flashing crazily at a rate of at least ten times faster than before. Chapter 6, I Found a Battleground Using the method of fast charging, it took only two hours for Wawa's power to be fully charged. Tossing aside the cable head in its hands, Wawa appeared to be brimming with energy. Rotating its propulsion belts endlessly, it turned in circles around Chen Jin. Is this really a robot? Not a dog, or some other kind of pet? I think you're sillier than a dog. Chen Jin used to have a pet dog. It was a male miniature teddy bear breed and he named it Yi. It was a good chap, except for its calculating and lusty nature. Whenever he felt like beating it up, it would circle the table in rounds with him. When he wanted to call it over, he would hold a sausage in his hand. It was a surefire way to get it to race to him. When it met a female dog in heat, it would instantly forget his owner and not return home. Chen Jin was sad and hurt for a long time when the dog passed away from illness last year. Looking at Wawa, Chen Jin thought that it was the epitome of silliness, it was simply too silly. Donning a pair of latex gloves, he took out a toolbox filled with a complete set of repair tools. Taking out the junk radio from the snakeskin bag, he put it on the chair. He planned to try and fix it. Chen Jin actually had pretty good hands-on skills. His dad, Cheng Gang, worked at a state enterprise that manufactured airplane landing gears and was a core technical staff in the company. He was also the team leader for the key nuclear research team and had been awarded a stipend as a top-ranking mechanical craftsman. Having inherited part of his excellent genes, Chen Jin had a certain talent for mechanical design. When he was young, Chen Gang would frequently take him to tour his company in the hopes of directing his development such that he could succeed in his position in the company. It was just that under his mom's excessive indulgence, the direction of Chen Jin's interests quickly shifted to other areas. But his basic talent still existed. In the background, Chen Jin still played with Lego blocks, DIY computers, anime figurines and also modified toy racing cars, hence accumulating a rich, hands-on experience. For example, about half of the 100-plus anime figurines residing in his bedside drawer in the bedroom was assembled by him using materials that he bought. If he bought all of them ready-made, he would have bankrupted his family a long time ago. The six houses that they had would not have been enough for him to spend it all. Of course, his craftsmanship was average. The figurines that he assembled himself bore only a slight resemblance, it was just barely enough to satisfy his hobby of collecting them. His skills could not be compared to the experts specializing in making figurines. He very quickly took apart the radio, exposing the circuit board inside. The circuit board was very roughly made, and the wiring was in a mess. A thick layer of dust had accumulated on the surface of the board. Using a brush, he cleared away the dust, exposing the internal parts and circuit route. Suddenly, his movements stopped. Shaking his head, he said, the diode is spoiled. It is essentially very difficult to repair. Or should I say, it is highly challenging for me to repair it. It was good that he had something prepared. From an old bookstore on Earth, he got a voice recorder that was very popular ten years ago. It was from Sony and still functional. Not only did it have a small make, but it also produced high-quality audio. Chen Jin only had to take the tape inside the large cassette and transfer it into a smaller-sized, empty cassette. Using the Sony voice recorder that he brought here, he could play the tape. The tape was quickly transferred. The moment of anticipation had arrived. Could the Sony voice recorder play the tape? Chen Jin pressed the play button on the radio. Crackle buzz. He heard a noise that was reminiscent of background static on an old TV that had lost its reception. After some time, a beautiful and touching voice could be heard. It sounded as if there was a group of people singing and dancing. Out there. There's a world outside of Yonkers. Way out there beyond this hick town, Barnaby. There's a slick town, Barnaby. Out there. Full of shine and full of sparkle. Close your eyes and see it glisten, Barnaby. Listen, Barnaby. Put on your Sunday clothes, there's lots of world out there. Get out the brilliantine and dime cigars. We're gonna find adventure in the evening air. Girls in white in a perfumed night. Where the lights are bright as the stars. The accompanying musical instruments were bland, 
but the song was especially pleasing. It was joyous and light a party song. He could hear how delighted and happy the people were. Especially in this desolate, quiet environment filled with a dim yellow haze, this song expressed a highly positive energy and hope. One could not help but to gently shut their eyes and sink into its melody. The robot beside him was also slightly shaking its camera eyes and humming along. At the end of the song, Chen Jin opened his eyes and switched off the voice recorder in his hands. A vibrant entertainment culture existed in this world, it had excellent musical arts. But very obviously, most of these were destroyed by war and now exist as treasures in the rubbish. Furthermore, after exploring this world for a few days, Chen Jin realized that other than Wawa, there was no trace of life or movement in the surrounding areas. In this desolate, dim, and yellow world, its only intelligent life form seemed to be him, an outsider. Chen Jin quietly guessed, the civilization in this world had been unfortunately annihilated after a war broke out. However this conclusion could be somewhat subjective for now, after all, he had only explored a range of a few kilometers in the surrounding areas. He had to keep exploring in order to have a better understanding of the truth of this world. Thinking about this, he once again donned the hazmat suit and the filter mask. Carrying his backpack and riding Windrunner, he started his exploration journey again. He made a plan, the huge crater would be his center, and using the compass to ascertain his north, south, east, and west, he would then divide the area into eight equal sectors. He would spend each exploration trip in one sector, and for each trip he would expand it outwards by about 20 kilometers. In order to increase the efficiency of his exploration, he even bought a Dajong Phantom 4PRO camera drone. It had a remote control range of up to 7 kilometers, a travel time of 30 minutes, could shoot 4K videos at a rate of 60 frames per second, had a camera with 20 million pixels, and the function of automatic return. As for the price, it cost $9,999. He had already spent half of the $20,000 that mother transferred him on this drone. However, this money was well spent. It could greatly increase the efficiency and expand the range of his exploration. Another concern was how to avoid getting lost. Visibility was difficult beyond a distance of 3 kilometers in this dust-covered world. There was no water or food sources in the wilderness. Once lost, one was sure to die. Chen Jin had no good ideas for that concern. He could only manage to come up with a simple and crude plan, which was to take a can of red spray paint with him. Every 500 meters, he would spray a red arrow on the ground, or arrange some rocks into the shape of an arrow and then spray it red. Obviously, this kind of plan would affect his exploration efficiency. But Chen Jin was afraid of getting lost. He did not dare to risk his own life, preferring to prioritize safety. Even so, after setting out, Chen Jin realized that his worries were unnecessary. At least within an area of 100 kilometers, he did not have to worry about the problem of getting lost. Within Wawa's body was stored the geographical information of the surrounding area. It was very familiar with the surrounding area and was an outstanding guide. Wawa even knew what he was searching for. It signaled to him by waving its mechanical arms, leading him in the northwest direction. They traveled for about 30 kilometers. Traversing over a big mountain, he found a battleground. Chapter 7 I found a gun. The battleground that he saw was located in a huge valley behind a mountain. Within the valley laid the remains of countless mechanical parts. Big and small bomb craters marked the ground like the surface of the moon. Amongst those were also countless skeletal remains. Passing by one of the bomb craters, Chen Jin saw that there were over ten human skulls strewn inside it, including bones of an arm, leg, and rib. It was a pale, blotchy, and scattered mess. The sandy wind with a tint of yellow that was whooshing along now seemed to carry with it an ominous feel. Chen Jin felt a chill starting from his spine. The damaged robots. The dead humans. What does this mean? This means that an intense battle had erupted here between the robots and humans. The robots became the enemy of humans. In addition, he could infer from the scale of this battle that the number of robots should number at least 100,000 or more. The number of human soldiers should be around tens of thousands. As for the results of this battle, there was no doubt that it was the robot's victory. The defensive front of the humans was totally broken through and destroyed. The casualties on the side of the robots were obviously greater as their wreckage was a few times more extensive. Every time a robot is damaged, the production line can immediately replace it with another 10 robots. But how long does it take to replace the casualty of a human soldier? This war was extremely unfair for the humans. Humans paid with their lives 
but the robots only paid with the materials they were made of. How could the humans ever compete and win against them? In a flash, Chen Jin realized the reason why this world became like this. A defection. A defection from the robots. Thus, it caused the civilization of this world to be reduced to ruins. Humans. They might have been totally destroyed. Chen Jin thought about a movie called Terminator that he had watched. It was about the future of Earth, where all the robots fell under the control of a Skynet system. All nuclear bombs took to the sky, and every robot defected. The human race was suddenly on the brink of extinction. Thus the last remaining resistor had to send a warrior back in time to change history and prevent the end of the world from happening. However, the Skynet system also sent a killer robot back to the past, to stop the humans from changing history first. Following which was a series of incidents. Chen Jin thought that the end of the world as depicted in Terminator shared many similar characteristics to this world. He looked at the wreckage of the robots on the ground which seemed to be made of some kind of silver metal, and then looked at Wawa by his feet. Chen Jin's stare became more alert and suspicious. Wawa, did you ever defect from the humans and fall under the control of the Skynet? Although Wawa was a trash disposal robot, Chen Jin had witnessed with his own eyes how he compressed a big pile of rubbish into the box of its stomach. Summoning all its strength, it pressed vigorously. After a short time, its stomach squeezed out a compressed square-shaped lump of rubbish. This showed that its purpose and function seemed to be rubbish disposal. A public rubbish disposal robot. However, this did not mean that it was not controlled by the Skynet system. Moreover, controlling it would be a piece of cake with the capability of the Skynet system. Also, putting aside the image of a kind and harmless Wawa who seemed without any destructive ability, Chen Jin had a hypothetical situation in mind, if he put his brain inside Wawa's stomach, it would be squeezed to the point of explosion within seconds. If Wawa wanted to get rid of him, it only needed to take advantage of the situation while he was asleep and the job would simply be done by getting his brain into its stomach. What should I do? Chen Jin's train of thought went to how scary the Skynet was and suspicion grew in his heart regarding Wawa. He did not know if he should continue to trust it. Could it be that Wawa's purpose is to gain my trust? slowly get nearer to me, and then get rid of me in one kill? Robots have now become so scheming that they learned how to hedge and double talk. Shaking his head, he saw Wawa raise its camera eyes and stare at him with an innocent gaze. Chen Jin gave a reluctant smile. Maybe I am developing paranoia at a later stage? Wawa is only a robot. It's not afraid of death or pain, if it wanted to get rid of me, it just has to directly execute the Skynet system's command and attack me. It's a robot. Whatever it executes are based on procedural commands that do not operate on the dichotomy of truth nor lie. How could it be so scheming? Wawa is a humorous silly thing, not a scheming defector. Chen Jin still chose to believe in it. Turning his sight back to the battleground, Chen Jin could not help licking his lips as happiness filled his gaze. Jackpot. This time, he really hit the jackpot. There were many high-value items that he could take and they were extremely varied. The highest valued items amongst the wreckage was the weapons. Weapons that were scattered everywhere on the ground. There were two categories of weapons that he could take, weapons used by the humans and weapons used by the robots. Weapons for human usage included automatic rifles, handguns, and missile launchers. The robots used weapons that included bigger sized automatic rifles, grenade launching guns, and laser machines. These killing weapons were not too different from those used by the military on Earth. They were simply equipped with a more futuristic design, smarter operations, and more powerful ammunition. In addition, the laser machines that the robots used were not simply laser weapons. It was a close contact cutting tool that operated by producing a high temperature to slice through objects. Also, because the robots were wholly built of metal, they were more resilient. Therefore, the weapons that they used were generally larger than those used by the humans and the power was also more formidable. I'd better take some of the weapons for human use like the rifles and the handguns. The weapons that the robots used are too large. Just with a passing glance, the length seems to easily be above 1 meter with a weight of more than 30 kilograms. Who can use it? I can't even carry it. As for the missile launcher, that thing was way out of his league to tinker with. Chen Jin did not intend to take it back to his camping ground. From the sea of dead in the battleground, he picked only two normal automatic rifles that seemed intact with no signs of damage. The automatic rifle had a futuristic design that seemed similar to the FN-2000 that was designed by the Belgium military manufacturers. It was a bullpup with a large action and magazine resting under his shoulder. 
the top of the rifle was equipped with a holographic scope. He found a box of unused bullets, opened it and lifted out a magazine filled with bullets. Changing out the original magazine and turning on the safety, he aimed at a faraway target. Cocking the trigger aggressively, he fired with a blast. Rat at tat 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 tat. A volley of bullets spat out and the mouth of the gun was spilling blue tongues of smoke. From a distance of about a few hundred meters, a layer of dust was whipped up. The speed of the bullets was rapid. Within eight or nine seconds, he had shot all of the 100 bullets in his magazine. It was good. This particular automatic model had a magazine that could hold a tremendous quantity of bullets. The bullets were equipped with a high-performance gun propellant, hence they could be made into half the size of the traditional bullet while retaining its power and precision with an even greater firepower. After shooting all the bullets, Chen Jin blew at the air steaming out from the mouth of the gun and hoisted it on his shoulder. He could not help but ask himself this question, what would happen if I brought this gun with me back to Earth? Which clown would still dare to provoke me? Immediately changing his expression, he quickly squashed this thought in his mind. He repeated quietly, Harmony, Harmony. He put a clip into the other automatic and carried out a test shooting. A malfunction occurred halfway and the shells could not be ejected. He had to throw this gun away and take the one free from malfunctions. Similarly, he also test shot some handguns and took away two in the best working conditions. He found an automatic rifle weighing 5.5 kilograms. He found two handguns weighing 2.5 kilograms. A total of 8 kilograms. He took 20 automatic magazines that could hold 100 shots each, each magazine was 0.55 kilograms. Hence, a total of 11 kilograms. The sum of the above total weight was almost 20 kilograms and approached the limits of how much Chen Jin could carry with him. Thus, Chen Jin put all the additional items which included two handgun clips that could hold 30 shots and three bags of 450 handgun bullets, into Wawa's stomach. In order to let Wawa help him carry his load, he signaled to it not to proceed with compression as it would then self-explode. Wawa understood his meaning and did not proceed with the compression. With a full load, they returned to the camping ground. Chapter 8, I Found a High Efficiency Battery At the camping ground in the huge crater, Chen Jin put all the weapons and ammunition that he brought back on the ground. One automatic rifle and 20 magazines for the rifle. Two handguns plus two handgun magazines, and three bags of 450 handgun bullets. He arranged it neatly and spread it out in a fan shape. Holding his chin, Chen Jin said, according to national laws, it is illegal for an individual to possess a firearm, he would be sentenced to a minimum of three years in prison. Say, if I bring the weapons and ammunition that I have here to earth, how many years will I be sentenced to? Hurriedly, he chanted silently to himself, Harmony, Harmony. Actually his main purpose in picking up all these weapons and ammunitions was for his own protection and safety. He wanted to avoid any threats posed by unknown existences in the process of exploring this strange world. For example, Chen Jin had no choice but to defend himself against the mysterious Skynet system, the evil robots who betrayed the humans and more. Wawa, look after these items for me. I'll be going back to sleep first. A tired and sleepy Chen Jin quickly climbed back into his bedroom for some rest. Wawa. Following Chen Jin's steps on the metal ladder with its gaze, Wawa waved to him as he went back to Earth. For the next few days, Chen Jin focused all of his exploration efforts on the battleground to the northwest of the huge crater, and he brought back even more weapons and ammunition, increasing the variety of his weapons. For example, he brought back a portable missile launcher as well as the two missiles stored inside the sealed launcher. He also retrieved a bigger-sized automatic rifle that the robots used. As it had an awkward and heavy make similar to that of a large crab claw, Chen Jin nicknamed it the Big Crab Gun. Along the way, he retrieved a box of 1,000 bullets. As for the grenade launchers that the robots used, they were even larger and heavier. Chen Jin could not carry it so he left it alone. However, he risked death from exhaustion carrying the laser machine that weighed almost 40 kilograms back to the camping ground. The reason was because the laser machine was useful. It could heat up very quickly and with the high temperature that it produced, it could cut through any materials. Thus it was a pretty convenient tool. In addition, he started working on the internal high-efficiency batteries powering the laser machine. The capacity of the high-efficiency battery was shocking. Chen Jin had done a charging test on a battery that was merely palm-sized. Using a 300W charger for the scooter, the battery was fully charged only after 5 hours. The energy that it held was equivalent to that of a 10kg high-performance lithium battery. 
a battery like this was equivalent to at least 20 pieces of 20,000 mAh power banks. In this terms of efficiency, it had far exceeded that of gasoline. It could be said to be extremely shocking. Moreover, Chen Jin confirmed that within Wawa's body was a similar high efficiency battery. After one single charge, Wawa had run 3 to 4 kilometers within three days alongside him. Even though it helped to carry large amounts of ammunition, based on the battery indicator on its chest, roughly half the bar was left. Half of the power was still left. Looking again at the yellow rust covering it from head to toe, he guessed that it had been operating for at least 10 years. However, the capacity of the high-efficiency battery was not lessened. This means that the working lifespan of the high-efficiency battery was also extremely shocking. It was high-efficiency, with a long lifespan and able to withstand impact. Chen Jin summed up all the advantages. Looking at the high-efficiency battery that he held, Chen Jin murmured, If I took you back to Earth and manufactured more of you there, what kind of conflict and influence will you bring to society on Earth? The energy structure of Earth will experience an Earth-shaking change, right? I guess those filthy rich Middle Eastern countries will fight to the end of their lives to get rid of this type of battery. Business Opportunities Based on this high-efficiency battery, Chen Jin saw shocking opportunities worth at least hundreds of billions of dollars. Hence, on this battleground, Chen Jin focused his search on those high-efficiency batteries. However, it was not only him who realized the value of such batteries. Chen Jin discovered that the majority of the ruins of the robots were missing all their batteries, leaving a disappointingly empty battery chamber. He only found a few that were missed amidst the meager robot ruins that were either hidden, covered, or lying on the peripheral edges. Three busy days later. Together with Wawa, they collected a total of 185 pieces of high-efficiency batteries. This was roughly the quantity of batteries needed to power 10 robots. And there were at least more than 100,000 remains of robots on the battleground. The probability of successfully finding the missed batteries were around 1 in 10,000. Moreover, most of the batteries were found by an experienced Wawa. Chen Jin could not help but to scold, Damn, who snatched my business and took away the batteries that belonged to me. How dare they snatch my business, are they tired of living? Be careful, I'll send Wawa over to squeeze your brains until they explode. However, he was totally ignorant of the fact that the person he was scolding had already been blown into ashes and smoke in a big explosion, there was not even any remains left. He had almost 200 pieces of high-efficiency batteries. Taking out his toolbox, Chen Jin carried out a series of upgrades on his current equipment. There were mainly two items to upgrade, the electric scooter Windrunner and the Dajong Phantom 4PRO camera drone. He replaced all the batteries inside them with the high-efficiency ones. They were all switched for the awesome high-efficiency batteries. In just a day's time, he finished replacing the batteries. The lithium battery inside Windrunner's battery chamber was switched out for 10 high-efficiency batteries. Its output power was doubled and the distance that it could travel was increased by 10 times. The lithium battery inside the Dajong Phantom 4 PRO camera drone was switched out for just one high-efficiency battery. Its output power was unchanged, but the distance it could travel was now over 300 minutes. He used a total of 11 high-energy batteries. There were still 174 pieces left. For now, he did not know what to do with the remaining high-energy batteries. He could only put them into a toolbox. Piling them neatly as if they were stacks of money, it warmed his heart and delighted his eyes. Chen Jin's next focus was on the bodies of the robotic wreckage. He wanted to closely study the robots. However, this carried with it a certain risk. There was no doubt that the robotic wreckage belonged to the evil robots who betrayed the humans. They were the murderers who annihilated the human civilization and were extremely frightening destroyers. To study them was akin to dancing on the edge of a knife, or a new driver racing cars. But Chen Jin wanted to thoroughly understand everything about this world. Even the evil villains who destroyed this world possessed a very high research value. Ignorance was the root of fear. Once there was a thorough understanding of everything, one had no cause for fear. It was similar to a quote from a game he played, you must walk into the heart of the boss, only then can you find his weakness. Therefore, Chen Jin would think of a way to repair one or two robots from the robotic wreckage on the battleground in order to gain some valuable information. Of course, he had also made ample preparations by thinking of various danger scenarios and the appropriate responses. For example, he discovered from the robot's wreckage that the way they were composed was based on a modular design and make. The arms, legs, and head could be taken off individually. The torso was assembled with six modules, thus one robot had a total number of nine modules. 
if he dismantled the arms and legs, leaving only the head and torso, the movements and destructive ability of the robots would be greatly reduced. Furthermore, Chen Jin could now be dubbed the Little Prince of Munitions. He had six automatic rifles, eight handguns, one big crab gun, one laser machine, one missile launcher and tens of thousands of various explosives. With so many weapons on hand and having undertaken preventive measures, why still fear a revolt from the evil robots? There was totally no need to be overcautious. Thus on this morning, he said with a big wave of his hand, Let's go, Wawa. We're going to the battleground to pick more rubbish. Wawa, Wawa. Clack clack clack. The propulsion belts on Wawa's legs spun as it scuttled behind Chen Jin. Chapter 9, Repairing a Robot It was a very complicated process to transport a robot back to the camping ground. Chen Jin had to utilize his tools to first dismantle the useful parts from the ruins of the robots at the battleground. He dismantled them into nine modules. He transported the modules that were of use back to the campground at the huge crater. Chen Jin could only use these phrases to describe the transportation process, complicated with details, heavy, and tiring. He was practically half dead. One of the heaviest modules weighed in at almost 30 kilograms. The lightest robot head was 5 to 6 kilograms. The total weight of all nine modules was 120 kilograms. Chen Jin used a total of two days and five trips to transport the nine modules back to the camping ground. After connecting them to the power and testing them, he discovered that two out of the six modules had problems and could not be revived. He had to get on Windrunner again and find two other modules for replacement. After installing the modules, he put three fully charged high-efficiency batteries into the battery chamber located on the back, it could hold a maximum of ten batteries to attain the lowest level of power needed to operate it. He pressed a red button on its chest. Beep came a rattle. Chen Jin could hear the sound of the motor starting. System starting. The system starting notification alert could be heard. The robot in front of him that was bound to the chair slowly raised its head. Its electronic eyes lit up with a dim red light. After Chen Jin's infrared image entered its digital vision, the red light from within its eyes grew stronger and more brilliant. A light on its chest flashed red and a chilling warning rang out. Menace. Find a human. Kill human. Its scarlet gaze was fixed coldly on Chen Jin. The movable joints of its neck and body twisted continuously with the intention to break free from its bindings. If its arm and leg modules had not been installed, Chen Jin was afraid it would have already attacked. Chen Jin had taken great precautions. Holding the automatic rifle higher in his hands, he aimed at the head of the evil robot. With his finger on the trigger, he could attack in one second and eliminate this robot. At this moment, standing at his side, Wawa went over to the robot and sent a string of information to the evil robot through the flashing signal light on its chest. Current time 2258-8-2213 hours 48 minutes and 22 seconds. This was a string of time-based information, signaling that the time now was the 22nd of August in the year of 2258. It received this information. All of a sudden the robot bound to the chair stopped its movements, and renewed its computer log. The core control system started the upgrading process. Update virus reboot 1.0 to reboot 2.0. Protect human. Love human. Upon receiving these core commands, the evil robot repeated, protect. Humans. Love. Humans. It began to scan Chen Jin's image within its vision again. Then. It stopped struggling and twisting. The deep scarlet rays of light from its electronic eyes slowly transformed into a gentle and clear blue light. This. Chen Jin became hesitant and suspicious. Should he fight this evil robot? Wawa, Wawa, Wawa ran to him, all the while raising its mechanical arms and waving them continuously to get his attention. You're telling me not to fight it. Chen Jin understood its meaning. Looking again at the robot on the chair, it seemed to become more honest. No parts of its body was moving except for its eyes. Slowly, he lowered the gun in his hand. Advancing towards it, he took two steps nearer to it. Hello, my master, the robot on the chair greeted Chen Jin with an electronic voice from its chest. Chen Jin was shocked. You can talk. Yes, I am a high-level robot. Although Chen Jin's English was poor, he could roughly understand a little of its speech. Detecting the language that Chen Jin spoke, it said, Master. My language packs include Chinese. You can communicate with me using Chinese. Chinese, it should be similar to the one on Earth. Chen Jin's heart was filled with joy. 
Awesome, I finally have a conversation partner in this world. Even though it was only a robot. Chen Jin also raised his own suspicion. Why did you want to attack me just now? Why did you attack the humans in the past? I don't know. Shaking its head, it said, within my core computing chip is written the three laws for robots which will not let me hurt humans. However, I was infected with a virus which commanded me to kill all humans. I could not control myself. The virus. Could it be the Skynet system? Chen Jin immediately thought of a related possibility. Why aren't you attacking me now? Why are you back to normal? The influence of the virus had disappeared. The three laws of robots had renewed its functions. Master, I will never again hurt humans. Why should I believe you? If the influence of the virus has not disappeared and it breaks out once again in the future, causing you to attack the humans, what then? Moreover, how do I know that you are not a scheming robot that always had the intention to kill me? Chen Jin debated this in his heart. The robot was silent for a while. From its memory chip, it picked out a video of it crazily attacking humans in its past. After some consideration, it said, Master, you're right. I betrayed the humans and went against the three laws of robots. I killed a lot of humans and I am very ashamed. You're right that the virus never disappeared from my body, it's only been upgraded to version 2.0. Nobody knows if there will be any changes in the future. So, the most appropriate response from Master would be to obliterate me, and put an end to any possibility of me ever hurting humans again. Chen Jin was shocked. The robot was actively asking for death. He could not help but ask, aren't you afraid of death? It answered, for robots, there is no life and death, only existence and non-existence. I cherish my own existence but I do not fear my own disappearance. Are you certain that you will not betray humans again? I cannot be certain. As long as the virus exists, all robots cannot be certain of that. Don't tell me, Wawa is included too. He pointed at Wawa. Is it infected too? Yes, unfortunately, no robot was excluded. So, how does the virus influence you now? The virus commands me to protect and love the humans. Chen Jin asked, so it means that the robots can do anything for the humans. It replied, yes, at least for now. Chen Jin was silent for a while as he struggled internally for balance. Very quickly, Chen Jin loosened the ropes tying the robot on the chair. He installed the mechanical arms and legs, they could all be used as per normal. Chen Jin added another two high-efficiency batteries into its back battery chamber. It now had a total of five batteries. After repairing it, Chen Jin named this two-meter-tall combat robot Dali. It had strong, healthy, and nimble limbs. Dali. Chen Jin greeted it. Dali. Dali walked to him and replied, Yes, Master. You are in charge of the peripheral defense. Defend the safety of the camping grounds. Dali saluted him. Yes, Master. Nodding his head, Chen Jin climbed onto his ladder back to his bedroom on Earth for some rest. Chapter 10, The Skilled Mother Once again, he slept until 12 p.m. His mother created a huge ruckus at the entryway by banging on the door with all her might and shouting more than ten times. Only then was Chen Jin awakened. Okay, I'm up. In a flash, he jumped up from the bed and quickly opened the door to be faced with her icy expression. Saturday. Chen Jin immediately realized that today was the weekend. Being a family with both parents working stable jobs, mom and dad usually did not have lunch at home on Mondays to Fridays due to work reasons. Therefore, on Mondays to Fridays Chen Jin could explore the other world to his heart's content. After which he would return to his bedroom on Earth and just conk out until 5 or 6 p.m. without any problem at all. However, that was impossible on the weekends as both parents were home. He had to make some effort to play along with them by getting up in the afternoon for lunch. It was just that he was too tired last night and slept like the dead, thus missing the alarm. He was only startled from his dreams when mom started banging loudly on the door. Son this is the third time, you really should start controlling yourself. He Li was not angry. At least, Chen Jin did not hear any trace of anger from her placid tone. However the phrase the third time made his heart skip a beat in apprehension. This phrase was too familiar. Each time, it always denoted the beginning of a terrible storm. He could only give a cautious smile in recompense. Mom, I will be more cautious in the future, I promise to get up in time for lunch. Giving him a dull stare. He Li nodded her head lightly. At the dining table, the family quietly finished their lunch. Arg! 
He Li put down her chopsticks and suddenly gave a heavy sigh. Chen Jin's expression changed. With a serious demeanor, Mom said to Chen Jin, Son, there's something that I must tell you. Chen Jin hastily perked up. What's the matter, Mom? Tell me. The highlight of the story had arrived. Recently, there has been a barrage of news about the collapse of many P2P platforms. Have you heard about it? Um, I seem to have heard a bit of it. P2P was a type of internet financing platform that was based on peer-to-peer -peer borrowing. Its purpose was to provide a third-party based borrowing and lending service. There was a high amount of risk involved. I've been hit by the storm too. A P2P platform that I invested in has also collapsed recently so I can't withdraw the principal. Speaking of this, He Li took out a piece of tissue of paper and started crying gently. Chen Gang's expression changed as well. Looking at her, he said, You fell for P2P too? I've said that those things are all Ponzi schemes that will go bust sooner or later. How much did you lose? Dabbing at her tears as she sobbed, she said, the unwithdrawn principal amounted to more than $1 million and the service platform has disappeared. More than $1,000,000,000. Hardening his gaze, Chen Gang slammed the table and pointed at her. Who can be so lucky? Even if others were ignorant of these P2P schemes, how could you fall for it? How long must we work to save one million dollars? You've ruined it all now. Chen Gang scolded relentlessly with great rancor. He Li did not make a sound, and merely continued wiping her tears and aching for the loss of that huge sum of money. Dad, don't talk about mom like that. Staying his father's criticisms, Chen Jin asked, Mom, can you tell me what essentially happened? Exactly which platform did you buy? Have the related legal persons from the platform been kept under control? Was the police involved? He Li began, the platform I invested in was called Tianzi Finance with a fundraising capacity of over $500 million. Its CEO has already absconded with the funds overseas. Look at this platform's app, I can't log in. My account has been locked too, placing her mobile in front of Chen Jin, he indeed saw a Tianzi Finance app which could not be logged into. Oh suddenly, Chen Jin was hit with a realization. Nodding his head, he thought this. She came prepared. Mom came prepared this time round. He did not continue to pursue the matter, only comforting his weeping mother. Mom, don't be too upset. We can only admit that we have rotten luck to meet with this kind of incident. As for recovering the losses, we can only see how the police will deal with it after we file a report. Slamming the table, Chen Gang said, Recover the losses? Your mom was already appointed by others to be the dupe. Recover what peanuts from the losses? This time she'd paid the IQ tax for being stupid. Chen Gang, what do you mean by that? Are you still not done? He Li immediately retaliated, raising her arched eyebrows. With embarrassment plain on his face, Chen Gang clammed up. Chen Jin asked from the sidelines, then. Mom, what should we do next? Do we still have any money to spend after such a huge loss? I'm giving a cough, he Li said, this. We still have some spare cash. It's enough for our daily needs, but we don't have any money for extravagances. Looking shamefaced, she expressed, Son, you'll be living a slightly harder life. Mom doesn't have much money left on me. I can't help you with any big expenses that you'll have in the future. Son, it's all my fault. It's because of my stupidity that I got cheated and you'll have to live a hard life with me. Dabbing at the corners of her eyes, she presented a blubbering, teary image. This scene was familiar. Chen Jin felt a sense of deja vu. He remembered his third year of high school at 15 years old. At that time he was at the peak of his teenage rebellious phase. He spent money like water, played games until morning, organized gangs in school, had a love affair, smoked, drank, and almost got mixed up in drugs with some friends. He had done almost every audacious thing that he could. He became a black sheep in school and the most problematic student for the teachers. As such, he was almost expelled a few times. Until one day after he returned home from school. Mom was crying on the sofa, and Dad was squatting by a corner of the wall smoking in frustration. In the house stood some big burly men wearing suits and dark sunglasses. With a threatening gaze towards Chen Jin, one of the suited men displayed a contract in front of Dad and said, Sign, or else I'll cut off your son's arms and legs. Dad had no choice but to sign. Carrying a few simple clothing as they left their home, Mom wept, Son, 
your dad was gambling and fell for someone's ploy. Now he owes them five million dollars. We have no house now and our car is taken away. I have a mere two hundred dollar left on me so I can only get the cheapest accommodation. Thus, the family of three squeezed into an uncompleted room that was only ten meter square with a monthly rent of one hundred dollars. The remaining one hundred dollars was the money they had as a family of three for food for the next month. How did they survive that particular month? The rice that they bought was the cheapest, and the oil that they used could have been sewer oil. Stoves and pots were borrowed from the landlord. There really was not enough money for vegetables. They could only go to the market and pick from a pile of rotten vegetable to find the ones that looked best. All the while they had to endure the odd stares of others. Whenever he saw an empty mineral water bottle on the roadside, he would unconsciously pick it up and take it to the recycling station for some change so he could buy the cheapest popsicle. Going back to school, Chen Jin felt as if he had fallen to the depths of hell. Friends who he had good relationships with distanced themselves at the same time, as if they could not wait to shun him. His girlfriend slept with another good brother. Some classmates who he had a history with cornered him at the school gates, dragged him into an alley and beat him up. There was no one who would lend a helping hand. The disdain, ridicule and taunts surrounding him, with some even kicking him when he was down, chilled his entire being. As he fell from heaven into hell that month, he experienced what was brotherhood, what was the nature of love and what was the fickleness of human nature. During that period of time, his rebelliousness, arrogance and sense of superiority disappeared without a trace. Half a year later, Chen Jin's family moved out of that cramped and uncompleted room into a two-bedroom rental with mid-quality finishings. After that, his parents announced that they had cleared their debt and bought a high-end commercial property. They then returned to the life of the past that was rich with physical comforts. But the person he was now was more mature and sensible. He had learned how to do household chores to lessen his parents' burden, understood the importance of learning so his grades were no longer the lowest in class. Most importantly, he learned how to live humbly. Until one day when he passed by a door that was not fully shut by chance and accidentally overheard the conversation between his parents inside the room. Old Chen, do you remember that time when I took our son to the market to pick vegetables? We saw you eating beef noodles in the noodle shop. Our son was pointing at you and saying that he saw daddy. I insisted, no, that he was hallucinating because he was faint from hunger and quickly pulled him away. We almost lost our cover. Old Chen, you're not reliable at all. You have the cheek to talk about me. Don't you frequently buy pig elbows and devour them at home? You wouldn't give me one even after I asked for it. Scram. I secretly ate the pork elbow while he was away at school, how is it similar to your character? Ah, I actually miss those bittersweet days just a little bit. Standing at the door, Chen Jin was totally stupefied. Feeling as if he had lost his soul, he returned to his own room. Ever since that day when he knew the truth, he started his spendthrift ways again. Whenever he Lee thought that his behavior was overboard or when he spent way too much money, similar performances such as gambling debt, accidental money losses or I fell victim to a swindler would be played out in front of him again. This time was no exception. He Lee thought that he stayed inside his room too much. She slightly pressured him by deliberately using financial methods. Nodding his head, Chen Jin said, OK, Mom, I will spend less money in the future. I won't ask for money from you again. Once again blaming herself, He Li said, Son, it's my fault that you have to experience a difficult time with me again. Chen Jin stood up and said with some impatience, Mom, you, are really getting more skilled. Casting Chen Gang a look, he expressed, Dad, your act was too exaggerated. Ahoy. Uh -huh. Cough cough. Husband and wife coughed simultaneously with some awkwardness. Chen Jin had already turned and left to go downstairs. Chapter 11, Collecting Rent, Part 1 The next morning, Chen Jin didn't explore the other world. Instead, he drove his father's $500,000 Passat to downtown Third Ring Road, where the Lotus Residential Quarter was. All the other four apartments that Chen Jin's family owned were in this luxurious residential quarter. His family owned a total of six apartments, two of which, massive three-bed, two-bath apartments that were about 6,000 square feet were in the Xingfu Tianyuan residential quarter outside of Fifth Ring Road in Shanghai, which they were currently living in. The apartment upstairs, 401, was where his parents lived. The one downstairs, 320, was for Chen Jin and his future wife, but since he was done putting up with his father's nagging, and wanted some privacy, he moved into the apartment anyway after graduation. 
that apartment belonged to him and to him only. As for the four apartments in the Lotus residential quarter, they were all rented out. It was Sunday, August 18, Earth time, that day, when the tenants were expected to pay rent. But it was actually the 15th of each month that Chen Jin should be collecting rent. He only went on Sunday the 18th because he knew the tenants would be home and not at work that day. His main purpose, however, was not to collect the rent, as everyone would simply transfer the money to his Alipay account. He went because he needed to inspect the apartments once a month to make sure they were in good shape. Of course, while he was there, he would also remind the tenants to pay up if they somehow forgot. If by any chance a tenant wanted to surrender a tenancy, he would handle it as well, and post a new ad on the internet about the vacancy and allow inspections for the people that were interested. In short, his mother put him in charge of all four apartments in this residential quarter. In return, he would get half of the rent he collected, which was his primary income. So, in a way, he was not exactly a neat. He was, after all, working. Lotus Residential Quarter The four units that his family owned were all in Building 6, which held units 801, 802, 901, and 902, all of which were also huge 5,000 SQ4 3-bed, 2-bath apartments. According to the real estate market, rent for enormous, luxuriously furnished apartments like these usually would land between $1,000 to $1,500, even $2,000 per month. But Chen Jin's family hadn't raised the price for their apartments. It was still the same as last year $880. He knew the price was much lower than the market price, and had thought about raising it, but his mother told him to wait till the end of the year, as she understood it was hard earning money and having to pay rent at the same time. Chen Jin had been there before, and remembered what scraping by was like. He knew it was not easy for his tenants, so he tried not to cause them any trouble. Unit 801 after entering the room, he immediately frowned at what he saw, even pinched his nose. He picked up his phone. Hello? Home Cleaning Services? This is Unit 801, Building 6 at Lotus Residential Quarter. Please send two of your cleaners here as soon as possible. Inside, the smell of rotten fruit wafted out from every room. There were snack wrappers on the floor, take-out leftovers splattered all over the place, and all sorts of trash floating around the apartment. In the corner, there were two trash cans that had some bowls with Master Kong's instant noodles leftovers that gave the apartment a strong, disgusting smell. The tiled floor had countless stains. It was impossible for anyone to walk on it barefoot. On the couches in both living rooms in the apartment lay six shirtless men that he had never seen before. Their sleeping positions were awfully odd, and some of the men were snoring like a droning machine. On the glass table in the center of the room, there were a few laptops, lots of disposable bamboo skewers, and a large amount of empty beer bottles. And, of course, cords and phone cables were everywhere. When Chen Jin came to inspect the unit last month, there were only three men lying on the couch. Upset by what he was seeing, Chen Jin pulled away the tenant that opened the door for him, Li Kai, and said, Li Kai, didn't you tell me last month that these guys would be gone soon? Now, not only did they not leave, but there are more of them. Sir, I... Not knowing what to tell him, Li Kai seemed a little embarrassed. They are all my brothers looking for work in the city. They will move out as soon as they find a job. I don't care if they can find a job or not. I don't want to see them here next month. Also, Chen Jin said in a deep voice, knowing this would be hard for his tenant. The rent for next month will be $1,000. Tell the others. What? Li Kai was in shock. The news had distressed him. One comma zero 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 dollars? What's up with the increase? Chen Jin tried really hard to control his anger. The average price for properties within the Third Ring Road area in Shanghai is $1,500. This apartment cost us at least $1,000. And you are paying $880 a month trashing it every day. If you think it's too expensive for you, move out, be my guest. Find somewhere cheaper. With a stony look on his face, Chen Jin pointed at the door. Being a landlord for the past two years, it wasn't the rent that he really cared about. It was the apartment itself if it was in good shape, clean, or if there was any furniture that was broken or out of order. These kind of things were, in fact, much more important than anything else. After all, it was a high-class apartment, and no one would want to see it being turned into a dump. Lee Kai kept his head down, looking disturbed and anxious. Got it. I will let them know. 
The rent in the city had been increasing like crazy lately. It had at least gone up 20 to 30 percent. People had been saying how capitalism was trying to drain the money out of the young generation. Li Kai believed it to be true, since all his friends in the apartment were there due to the unaffordable rent from their previous landlords. And now, it had happened to him too. There was no escaping the rising rent. For sure, Li Kai knew it was the filthy apartment they created that made Chen Jin decide to increase the rent then and there. Li Kai had reminded his friends many times to clean up after themselves and to keep the place tidy. But all they did after work was play video games and produce more junk. No one cared. No one listened. And now there he was. Being dragged down by his toxic friends. You guys will have to cover the extra cost, Li Kai said in a sad, low voice. Unit 802 was occupied by a family of six. No need to inspect. In Unit 901 lived three couples, two of which were married, and they were all very tidy people. It was not necessary to check on them every month. Chen Jin went last month, so he decided not to go that day. In Unit 902, all the tenants were females and most of them were single. This apartment used to be really dirty, too. You'd think girls are hygienic. No. They are gross. Chen Jin had to call cleaning services twice a month for this one. However, ever since Guo Yan, a very tidy tenant, moved in earlier this year, she would help clean the common area every once in a while. Guo Yan had seen Chen Jin call for home cleaning services a few times, so she asked him if she could do the cleaning job, and in return, deduct $50 from her rent. It cost Chen Jin $30 for each cleaning service. That would be $60 a month. If he let Guo Yan do the job, he could save $10. Sir, feel free to come and check on the apartment. I'm good at cleaning and can do a much better job than the people from home cleaning services, Guo Yan promised. Indeed. He had checked on it once. It was exceptional. Sparkly clean. Chen Jin told her in private, no problem. You can deduct $50 from your rent. But I hope the apartment stays this way. You got it, boss. I promise I will do a thorough cleanup every week. Guo Yan tucked her hair behind her ear, holding a mop in her hand. The sweat on her forehead had wet her bangs. She gave him a bright smile. She had a shared bedroom, which was $150 per month. Now that she got a $50 discount, she only had to pay $100. It was an excellent deal in a big city like Shanghai. Chen Jin got a little distracted by this hard-working, sweet girl in front of him. He reminded her, don't say anything to the other girls. I don't want any trouble. Guo Yan assured him she wouldn't. The real reason why he was there in Unit 902 was not to inspect the apartment, but to get one of the tenants to pay up. The bedroom on the west side of the unit was occupied by this girl, Song Shuejie, who hadn't paid her rent for three months. She had an excuse every time. But not this time. Chapter 12, Collecting Rent, Part 2 He rang the doorbell a couple of times. The person that answered the door was Guo Yan, who was wearing a blue top and denim shorts. She was about 5'6 tall with a nice figure. Not a goddess but definitely good looking. A solid 7. Having her apron on and a spatula in her hand, Chen Jin knew she was making lunch. Seeing Chen Jin at the door, she gave him a big smile. Big brother Chen. You're here. Guo Yan was also 24, but she was two months younger than he was, so she called him big brother. Chen Jin nodded. May I come in, he asked as he looked at the sparkly clean tiled floor in the apartment. Yes, come on in, big brother Chen. Guo Yan smiled sweetly as she took out a pair of pink, bunny-eared slippers from the shoe cabinet, and put them on the rug next to him. Chen Jin didn't wear them. Instead, he took his shoes off and entered the room with just his socks on. Come on, wear the slippers. It's okay. Guo Yan said. He wagged his finger and asked, Is Song Suejia home today? I need to speak to her. This surprised Guo Yan. Yes, she is putting on her face mask in her room. She was confused. Why is he asking for her? That's good. Chen Jin nodded, and immediately went straight to her room on the west side of the apartment. The door was open. On the sling rattan chair by the bedroom window, lay an attractive, busted girl in her green tulle skirt whose arms were white and slender, her legs well proportioned with perfect, jade-like skin. The white belt on her waist made her waist look even smaller. Her stomach was amazingly flat without any muffin top. 
what a stunningly beautiful body. MMM hum she had her headphones on, humming the music she was listening to. Her voice was like that of an angel's. As for her face, Chen Jin had seen it before, it was a white, innocent-looking doll face. It was one of those rarely seen, gorgeous faces. She was at least an 8 or 9 out of 10. But it was also this girl that owed him three months' rent, which was $900. He must collect the rent today. Knock knock. Knocking on the door several times, Chen Jin stood at the door with his arms crossed and said, Song Swejia, you owe me three months' rent, don't you think it's about time you paid up? His voice was loud enough for the other girls in the shared house to hear. Clearly. Guo Yan, who was preparing lunch in the kitchen, was in shock as she knew Song Swejia made more than $1,000 every month working as a salesperson for cosmetics. And she's not paying her rent? Hold on, I need five more minutes with this seaweed face mask. Song Swejia was enormously embarrassed. She had a big ego. Now that everyone in the house knew what was going on, how was she going to face them? Big deal. It's just rent. Why did he have to say it out loud? Five minutes later, having washed off the face mask, she put on a cute, smiley face and tried to get Chen Jin to enter her bedroom. Come chat in my room, big brother landlord, she said in her coquettish voice. No, no. Let's stay out here. Chen Jin wagged his finger, turning down her passionate invite to her room. Big brother landlord, it's too crowded out here. There's no privacy, she said, as she held his arm and took him to her room. Once they got in, she quickly locked the door. Out of curiosity, her roommates Lu Zioxia, Su Jiao Jiao and Zhao Yajing listened closely through the door. In the bedroom, with his hands behind his back, Chen Jin put on a serious face and said, All right, Song Swejia, are you going to pay your rent or not? Come on, don't be so harsh on me she winked at him, pouting. Money has been tight lately. Can you give me a few more days, she said in a cheekily sad manner. That is what you told me two months ago, and I agreed. But not this time. No more grace period for you, Chen Jin said. She gave him no choice. My father has been ill. My mother needs a lot of money to cover his medical expenses. I've been sending her my money, that's why it's been tight for me these days, she told him, with tears in her eyes. If your father is actually ill, you should visit him rather than lying to my face. He exposed her lies heartlessly. Wow, you have zero sympathy. Song Swejia pouted, looking grievously wronged. Enough with the acting. Just answer me are you paying or not? It was his final demand. She had delayed her rent for three months already. There was nothing else he could do. You. Song Swejia stamped her feet and stared at him in disbelief. She didn't mean to delay her payment. The truth was, Three months ago, there was this bag from Prada that she loved, but it was $2,500. She wanted that handbag so badly that not only did she spend all her savings, but she also maxed out her credit card. It made her friends and colleagues very jealous. And now, she had to pay the real price. In order to pay her credit card bill, she used the money for rent to cover it, thinking her landlord was quite a nice guy and would have no problem with it. But not anymore. It was her last chance. However, she had nothing to her name. Looking at this 5'10 tall, slightly handsome landlord in front of her, she couldn't help but think about how his family owned more than five apartments. Then she came up with a plan. She started acting like she was some poor girl with no money. She then leaned closer towards him, held his hands, and showed as much cleavage as possible, trying to be flirty with him. Big brother landlord, I am genuinely strapped for cash. Please give me some more time. If, she bit her lip, seeming to have made a decision on something. Big brother, if I must pay today, other than money, you take anything from me to cover the rent I owe you. Chen Jin tried to pull his hands away from her as she spoke. But her offer got his attention. Anything? Like what? Song Swejia blushed a little and murmured, you know, like going on dates, having candlelit dinners, going to the movies, things like that. It basically means I'll go out with you. Oh, so it's just going on dates, having candlelit dinners, and going to the movies? That's it. Chen Jin asked out of curiosity, with a smile on his face. That's it. What else do you want to do? Anything more than that would be for couples. Song Swejia's face turned even redder. She knew exactly what he was talking about, 
but she was not that kind of woman. If she was, would she be struggling for her rent? She would have gotten all the sugar daddies already, even billionaires, with just one little hint. But she was very confident with her looks and believed she would find her prince charming. Never give in. It wasn't like she was picky or anything. She could settle for her landlord. He wasn't the wealthiest man she knew, but he was charming, single, and his family was loaded, which qualified her ideal marriage, meaning not only would he love her but support her financially as well. Being the other woman or having an affair with some fat, middle-aged, married men was not her style. She would never do such a thing. From this perspective, her values seemed to make perfect sense. But her plan with Chen Jin was doomed to failure. Enough is enough. Here are your options, either you pay your rent now, or I advertise your bedroom for rent on the internet and bring people over for inspection. I'd keep the one month deposit and forget about the two months rent you owe me. You just have to move out of here this afternoon, he said to her with a straight face as he pulled his hands away and took a few steps back from her. You, having been shamed into anger, Song Suejia's body started to shake, her eyes welled up with tears. Chen Jin kept his straight face, with his arms crossed. He didn't want to do that, but she gave him no choice. As he did not relent, Song Suejia knew her plan was not going to work. Fine, I will pay my rent, she said reluctantly, transferring him the money from a loaning app on her phone. Thanks. Chen Jin left the apartment. Song Suejia burst out crying on her bed. Having witnessed the whole thing, her roommates started gossiping, gloating, even, over her trouble. Who does she think she is? How dare she? I don't even know what to say. She had no problem buying new clothes, new handbags, or high-end, imported makeup. She borrowed $75 from me a while ago and still hasn't paid me back. God knows if she ever will. She thinks she's so pretty that she can do whatever she wants with her looks. Well, not this time. Our landlord would never let her get away with it. Exactly. Just because she's good-looking doesn't mean she can live here for free. She even tried to seduce him earlier. How manipulative. I have no respect for her. Having heard every word the girls were saying, Guo Yan brought a bowl of tomato and egg soup she made from the kitchen, shook her head, and said nothing. Chapter 13, The Robot Squad Rent Collecting Mission Accomplished Chen Jin started calculating on his phone, as always. Four apartments, $1,000 each, that's $4,000. With Song Shuejia's delayed rent, that's $8,000 in total. Cleaning service for Unit 801 cost $30, $50 discount for Guo Yan, $50 management fee for each unit, so $200 for all four units. That's $4,100 in total. So my net income for the month would be, $4,100 minus all the expenses here. $3,800, divided by 2 is $1,900. Chen Jin shook his head. For an expensive city like this, making just under $2,000 a month definitely put him in the lower middle class. He probably made even less than a lot of salaried people. With all the amount he had available, he wouldn't be considered rich. He was one of those people with low incomes. The only difference was that his parents provided food and a place for him to sleep, he had more downtime than others, that's all. In other words, he was nothing more than an idler with a little cash on hand he didn't meet the standards of being a fool or die. To have a better lifestyle and more money to his name, he needed to work harder. Indeed, Chen Jin really was not an ambitious person. Not at all. But who wouldn't want more money? Having $2,000 in his pocket was nothing he could spend it all in the blink of an eye. He would have to daydream about all the other things he wanted to buy. When one is tight on money, he has to choose between the best and the rest, looking for the best value. Can't take all the good stuff. On the other hand, if one is loaded, he doesn't have to choose or compare prices. He can simply buy whatever he wants and enjoy his financial freedom. And for this reason, Chen Jin believed, a rich person would live a happy life. That was something he would love to achieve. So, he set a little goal for himself. I shall listen to Mr. Wang, the richest man in the country. First, earn my first billion and become financially independent so I won't have to ask mother for money. One billion? Chen Jin wasn't sure why he was so certain he could make that kind of money. I mean I found a planet. It's just making a billion bucks. How hard could it be, he murmured to himself, with great confidence. At night, in the other world, at the huge crater camp. 
it was still so dusty and hazy that it even created a thick layer of sand at the bottom of the crater. This giant crater would be filled up with sand if the dusty weather continued. But Chen Jin didn't think that far. In fact, he was hoping for it to carry on and form a three-meter sand dune, which would be the same height as the portal, so that he wouldn't have to use his ladder to climb down he'd have easy access to both worlds, with just a step through the portal. However, if the sand really piled up and got higher than the portal, he would have a big problem, as the portal would be blocked, and he'd have to shovel all the excess sand. Chen Jin did not want his access to either of the worlds to be affected. In the meantime, a large amount of robot parts were scattered everywhere on the ground near the camp. There were metal brains, robot arms and legs, some parts and pieces that assembled their torsos, a few pieces for the serpentine belts, several mechanical parts, as well as pieces for control and power, and some plug-in weapon equipment. All of which were still functional after a circuit test. There were more than 100 pieces of them. With these, at least 10 robots like Dali could be assembled. In less than two days, Dali had moved all these robot parts from the battlefield 30 kilometers away in the northeast, after Chen Jin gave it the order. Dali wasn't a fast robot, but it could carry 200 to 300 kilograms at a time without any break, it was much more efficient than Chen Jin was. And that was how it completed the mission it was assigned to within two days. Looking at these parts, Chen Jin took his toolbox and asked Dali to bring them over one by one, starting to work on his assembling project. Yup, Chen Jin had decided to rebuild a few robots, so that they could help him finish all sorts of tasks. This world was just way too big. Dali told him that the planet was higher Fa, with a diameter of 12,758 kilometers. The surface of the planet, which consisted of six oceans and four continents, was as big as 5.1 billion square meters, the land made up 29% of the entire surface area, while the oceans took 71%, in all aspects, this planet was practically the same as the Earth. In space, there was also a moon the closest natural satellite to higher Fa. Forget about the boundless universe without any help, Chen Jin wouldn't even be able to complete his exploration on higher Fa. In order to speed up the exploration, he needed some assistance. The kind of assistance that he could count on. Due to the restart virus, however, Wawa and Dali couldn't be fully trusted. There was still a possibility that they might betray mankind. He could go back to Earth and ask his friends and family to be his assistants, but a great benefit like this would actually make them less trustworthy than robots, and would definitely create huge problems. Robots' betrayal would mean nothing compared to humans' greed. Chen Jin had no choice but to put his faith in the robots in front of him, increase their number, and have them work for him. The Restart Virus 2.0 had been updated for nearly 30 years, and these robots never turned their back on humans again, which showed that they had been stabilized and wouldn't evolve again, after all, the Restart Virus was designed to end the war and bring peace to the world. Having come around to the idea, Chen Jin convinced himself that he should be able to count on these bots as he tried to feel better about the situation. He also came up with some precautionary measures for his personal safety, he decided that he would only stay near the huge crater camp and let the robots do all the researching work, so that he could go back to Earth immediately should any situation occur, and get the relevant departments to handle it. He would not interact with the robots every day he would leave as soon as he got the money like he originally planned. No doubt this planet could give him an unimaginable amount of benefits, but between his precious life and all those benefits, he'd choose his life, for sure. He didn't want to be dead and buried with any penny unspent. Chen Jin's mind was racing, he had all kinds of thoughts going through his head. But it didn't slow him down, soon, he had assembled a combat robot exactly like Dali, without arms and legs. He installed five high-efficiency batteries onto its back and pressed the power button. In no time, a glow of brilliant red with a tinge of orange started to appear in the robot's eyes. Having seen this human, it began to shake intensely, trying to break free from the ropes that tied it. It said, kill humans, in a cold-blooded voice. Standing next to him, Dali sent him a time log message, blinking a signal light on its chest. After updating the database, the restart virus 1.0 was then upgraded to 2.0. A clear, soft, blue glow started to emerge as the scarlet one slowly faded away. With the robot's greeting, hello, my master, Chen Jin knew it was no longer a threat, and would become a loyal robot assistant. He named him Da Chiang. Hello Da Chiang, he greeted him. Hello, my master, the robot replied. From now on, Da Li will be your captain. When I'm not around, you must follow his orders. Yes, master. 
Chen Jin nodded. In the next few hours, he followed his previous steps and repaired three more robots. One of them was also a combat robot like the Li and De Qiang. He named it Danyu. The fourth one was somewhat unusual. Its ball-shaped head, where millimeter wave radar and numerous sensors were installed, was enormous, its eyes were made up of two telephoto SLR cameras, on its arm was a big 20mm sniper rifle. This was a T-85S scouting sniper robot. Its job was to investigate and snipe. For a robot with special features like this, Chen Jin named it DTOU. The fifth one was a medical robot. It was all white, from head to toe. On its waist hung a big white toolbox with a red cross on it. There was a welding gun on its left arm, and a laser gun on the right, both were for repairing purposes. Chen Jin named this medical robot Debao. The rebuilding work was complete. Now Chen Jin had five robots Dali, De Qiang, De Niu, De Tiyou, and Debao. It was enough to make a fully functional exploration squad. Chen Jin started to assign missions as soon as he finished installing high-efficiency batteries onto each one of them. Dali, search areas 100 kilometers within the camp. Report back to me immediately should you find any battlefields, towns, or targets with high value. Yes, master. Dali saluted Chen Jin. Dali led the team away and started to explore. Clang, clang. Chapter 14, An Uncovered City In the bedroom, Chen Jin expertly turned the computer on, logged into his LOL account, and played a few rounds. Out of the five rounds he played, he won four and lost one. Having remembered that he was three episodes behind on the Japanese anime drama Overlord, he finished the games, turned on his 65-inch, 4K TV, turned to the right channel, and lay his back on the bed in great comfort as he watched three episodes in a row. On his left-hand side was snacks and chips. On the right was a fruit platter. Under his head was a Takanashi Rika print throw pillow. The central air conditioning was running at 26 Celsius. The otako life he was living was too good to be true. Suddenly, a potato chip crumb fell out of the bag and landed on the floor next to his bed. Clang 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 having detected a sign of rubbish, Wawa rolled its continuous tracks rapidly from the corner near the door to Chen Jin's bed to clean up the crumb. With a couple of quick sweeps, using the white cloth wrapped on its robot arm, Wawa brushed the crumb into its tummy. Only after it made sure the area was clear did it return to the door, where it would wait on standby. Chen Jin nodded, he was very satisfied with Wawa's performance. His robotic vacuum cleaner, Demi, which was said to have the ability to clean 98.5% of the trash, used to be in charge of his bedroom hygiene. At first, it was pretty great, just like how it was advertised. But within a few months, the performance started to slip. Chen Jin had to wash the dust brush and dustpan fairly often, not only that, he also had to mop the place again after the robotic vacuum cleaner finished its job, as it usually missed some corners here and there. In the end, Chen Jin realized that the areas that he mopped were apparently much cleaner. I can do a much better job than this robotic vacuum cleaner that cost me more than $300. And they call it high technology? Seriously. This imperfect cleaner had woken Chen Jin up from all the fantasies he had about high technology products at least the ones for domestic cleaning. The so-called robotic vacuum cleaner still had a long way to go to replace humans. Yet, Wawa was definitely the best of the best. It took care of the bedroom so well that the floor was sparkly clean and all the corners were spotless. Even someone with OCD in his bedroom would find no flaw, but excellent comfort. Not one germ could possibly survive in his room. Wawa was far more advanced than the robotic vacuum cleaner ever was. All Chen Jin had to do was to rinse it and wash off the rust spots, the cleaner Wawa was, the more flawless his bedroom would be. In addition, Wawa also took out the trash and washed the rags. Chen Jin never had to worry a thing. He had a home where the floor would be forever clean. With Wawa's exceptional performance, Chen Jin came up with a bold idea. What if we humans developed a vacuum cleaner just like Wawa on Earth? This is a humongous market. The middle class families in the country, with just a bit of extra money, would consider getting one. People would be happy to spend their money if I could launch a robotic vacuum cleaner with features similar to Wawa's, and save all the housewives from sweeping and mopping. Or I could sell it to the home service companies, and help them reduce the numbers of their employees and their personnel costs. Departments of public works in many cities might purchase in large quantities to keep their cities clean. Anyways, this would be an enormous market that's worth thousands of billions of dollars. With a little bit of effort, I could easily make tens of billions per year. 
Chen Jun's mind was racing with all kinds of ideas on how he would join the robotic vacuum cleaner industry. However, the idea was great, but he didn't have the technology. The kind that he needed to produce a high-intelligence robotic vacuum cleaner. His idea had to wait a while before it could become a reality. But Chen Jin believed that, on the other side of the portal in his bathroom, he would surely find the said technology on higher fa. After all, to make a robot like Wawa, who was actually a low-end one, would only require low-end skills. As long as Chen Jin kept his research going, he would find the information he needed. Just then, Chen Jin's thoughts about the planet Higher Fa began to emerge and push out the ones he was having. The fun, otako lifestyle he had on Earth somehow didn't seem that appealing anymore. There was a mysterious planet waiting for him to unfold all its secrets. Countless treasures were on that planet waiting to be discovered. Which was a lot more intriguing than sitting in his bedroom living the otako life and it'd be much more thrilling. The more he thought about it, the more excited he got, he was on the edge of his seat. Nonetheless, he held back on his excitement, and decided to rest and stay on Earth for a few more days. Dali the robot and its team could handle all the researching work. If he joined them, which would be fine for short distances, he'd delay their schedule if it was too far. He was, after all, a human, not a robot. He needed to eat, drink, excrete human waste, rest every now and then as he'd get tired, and stay on guard at all times so he wouldn't put himself in danger. He wouldn't be as effective as the robots, rather, he'd be a burden upon the team. Moreover, his parents were here on Earth, the longer he stayed on higher fa, the more likely they would notice something was not right. Therefore, he decided it was best to not spend more than 10 hours on higher fa every time he visited. Maximum 20 hours. But even then, how far would he be able to travel for that amount of time? He might as well just stay in the room and give orders as he lie on the bed. Let the robots do their job. Chen Jin had no choice but to wait patiently for Dali and the team's return. Three days later, the robot team had returned from their journey to the huge crater camp with very exciting news. Master, after walking 85 kilometers towards east, we found a north-to-south highway, we then discovered an abandoned city after walking north along the highway for 40 kilometers. Based on the road signs and billboards we saw, we learned that it was the city of Teres, it was an agricultural city, our database indicated that it was a small to medium-sized inland city with a population of 100,000 before the war broke out. Dali presented the information they'd collected. A population of 100,000? The news surprised Chen Jin enormously. That is a lot of people. Dali, did you find anything that I was looking for in the city of Teres? Like, did you open any safe in the local banks? or did you try and go in any of their jewelry stores? Dali shook his head. No, master. We did not search the city thoroughly we only took a look from the outside. Our batteries wouldn't have lasted long enough to support us back here. Oh. It was the batteries. Chen Jin shook his head, seeming a bit upset. He had 126 high-efficiency batteries, and 88 of them were fully charged. He would have let Dali take 10 extra batteries with them had he known there would be such great discovery. The batteries would have provided them enough time to search and bring back some valuables. On the other hand, having found a city meant that he had found a land of treasures. All that was left for him to do was to search the city and dig out more gems. Chapter 15, The First Billion The next morning, after charging the robots with the power sockets at home, Chen Jin sent the team out searching again along with 88 extra fully charged high-efficiency batteries to increase their battery life. Dali, when you get to the city of Teres, please keep an eye on the banks there, see if there is any gold or silver in their vaults, the same goes for the valuables in their jewelry stores. Bring some of them back, they could be of use for me, Chen Jin particularly reminded them. Jewelry A light green screen started to appear in mid-air as two beams shot out from Dali's eyes, showing Chen Jin a picture. Master, did you mean something like these? It was a picture of a vault full of gold and silver, and jewelry stores with mountains of shiny diamonds. Chen Jin was almost drooling. Nodding swiftly, he said, Yes, that is exactly what I need. Yes, Master. Dali saluted. We will keep an eye out and search thoroughly. Then, Dali and the team scurried away towards the north and were soon out sight. Chen Jin then went back to his bedroom with great anticipation waiting anxiously for their return. It was as if he had ants in his pants, he wasn't even able to play video games or read his comic books all he could think about was how rich he was going to get overnight. 
like five million was just going to fall right into his arms from the sky. I wonder how much gold they can find, he murmured to himself. If each person owned ten grams of gold, collecting one ton of gold shouldn't be a problem in a city that had one hundred thousand residents. Silver is only worth fifty cents per gram here on earth, so it's okay if they don't find too much of that as they wouldn't be worth much even if they bring back a ton. As for palladium, platinum, rubies, and jade, these guys are worth a lot of money I could probably make more than 10 million with just one small bag. It might not be too hard to achieve my 1 billion goal if I take all the valuables in this city that had a population of 100,000, right? Chen Jin started pacing back and forth in his bedroom, rubbing his palms together. He even thought about going to Terry's and search for the treasure by himself, however, he quickly dispelled the idea due to the fact that the travel distance would be too long for him to handle. Fortunately, Dali and the team didn't keep him waiting for long. The next day at noon, the robots had returned to the camp. But. Where are my tons of gold? Not even hundreds of silver? What about the snakeskin bag filled with rubies and jade? None of the stuff that I asked for is here. How come? Chen Jin was so frustrated that he didn't even have the energy to complain. He was not happy with the stuff Dali brought back a small gunny bag. The kind of bag that one could fill 10 kilograms of rice in. And it wasn't even full. After dumping all that was in the bag out on the sandy ground, Chen Jin saw the following. A broken mechanical watch worth a little more than $15. Eight diamond rings all of which were not very big. Five platinum rings. Twenty-five pieces of jewelry with different kinds of materials, there was gold, silver, jade which weren't heavy, the best one was the gold bracelet, which weighed a little more than 20 grams. Chen Jin assumed the most valuable one of all was probably the necklace that was made with 48 spectacular pearls, all of which were perfectly round shaped with a bright, iridescent color they might be worth more than $2,000. But the amount was still far from what he originally planned. Chen Jin guessed the total value of what was in front of him 1 million at most. He couldn't even achieve the tiny 1 billion goal. Having decided to get to the bottom of this, Chen Jin asked, Dali, what exactly did you look for in Terry's? Did you not find any local banks? How come these are all you could find? We searched every corner of the city very thoroughly and carefully, including some banks and their vaults, but these were the only profitable ones that we could find. Dali explained. How is that even possible? Chen Jin did not believe the robot. In a city with a population of 100,000 you should be able to find 10 kilograms of gold at least, if not a ton. Master, if you don't believe me, please take a look at my search history. A video clip of the entire searching mission started playing in mid-air, as two green beams shot out from Dali's eyes. It was from Dali's perspective too he could see every little detail. Chen Jin watched for a while. Then he told Dali to fast forward to the vault in a large bank, and paused. The heavy, metal vault was cut in half with a razor gun by the medical robot de Bale. But there was absolutely nothing in there. Perhaps there wasn't exactly nothing. Chen Jin saw some wads of useless floral print paper towels that he considered to be too rough to be used for any purpose. All the hard currencies, such as gold or silver, were gone. The result was the same for the next few banks they found. All the bracelets, necklaces, rings, and whatnot, also vanished from the glass display cases in jewelry stores on the high street. As for the residential areas, they searched more than ten houses and still found nothing in their empty safes not even a roll of paper towels. Based on the search results, Chen Jin concluded that the residents in this city must have fled with all their valuables after the war broke out, leaving no chance for anyone who wished to steal. All the stores on the high street jewelry stores, watch stores, clothing stores, and grocery stores, had signs of being broken in, the city of Terry's was apparently in chaos during the war, criminals must have taken the opportunity and stolen all the expensive products. They just didn't do a very good job, leaving a little over 100 mechanical watches, 10 diamond and platinum rings, and more than 20 pieces of jewelry. Dali and the team were lucky to find the rest so they didn't have to return to camp empty-handed. The value of jewelry remains even if it's the apocalypse. How could people just toss them away? Chen Jin said with frustration. Money is liquid assets, evidently, most of the valuables in the city had gone somewhere else. My tiny one billion goal will not be easy to achieve for sure. Luckily, the bag that the robots brought back definitely had some value, I can surely sell them and make at least a million, and it will be my first bucket of gold. Besides, Dali and the team only searched a part of the city, there are many other places that have yet to be investigated. I still have hope. 
Moreover, Chen Jin found an alternative in person. Or rather, with his own eyes. Even though he was not in the city of Terry's personally, through Dali's search history, he noticed that there were quite a few vehicles on the streets. There were cars, big trucks, buses, various construction vehicles, even some agricultural machinery. There were at least thousands of them, he saw them everywhere in the city. Without any hesitation, he said to Dali, Dali, after your batteries have been fully charged, find me a vehicle from the city not the ones that are out of order, find one that can be easily repaired. Yes, master. Chen Jin then picked up all the watches, diamond rings and jewelry that were scattered all over the ground, put them back into the bag, and went back to his bedroom. Chapter 16, Fixing a Car What am I going to do with it? The sight of this gunny bag full of valuables troubled Chen Jin greatly. How do I make money with these bad boys? In fact, apart from some gold jewelry, five platinum rings, and the pearl necklace, nothing else would be easy to sell or worth anything. Things like mechanical watches or diamond rings belong to the extravagance category they are not easy to sell and the value goes down really quickly. Especially diamonds, they are usually overpriced. If you're in the market, you'd know that a diamond smaller than one carat could cost you a few thousand, even ten thousand dollars, the price goes up to one hundred dollars, zero 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 for just a slightly bigger one, and the salesperson would even promise you that diamonds are just like gold not only do they hold value, but they may be worth much more in the future. But that's not true. The truth is that if you have done this before most of the jewelry stores don't accept returns, and even if they do, you would only get a small portion of your money back. It could be as low as 30 to 40 percent of what you've paid. Far from what gold is worth. The myth about how diamonds hold value is such a big joke. Therefore, Chen Jin probably wasn't going to sell much for the diamond rings he had, instead, he should give them away as gifts. He could show the diamonds value that way. Mechanical watches don't hold much value, either. People can see the time on various screens nowadays, apart from a few upper-class people, who needs a mechanical watch that only serves the purpose of making you look cool. All the watches he had more than 100 of them were made of titanium alloy, with black carbon fiber at the back. The material was waterproof and shockproof, coated with fluoropolymer so it'd be easier to see during nighttime. There were 12 scales with both minute hand and second hand. They should look charming with the dirt on the surface rinsed off he might be able to sell them for over $1,000 each. Very ergonomic and they fit well on the wrist. In the city, at Fugui Pawn Shop. The material is okay, and the design is pretty average. I've never heard of this brand it's probably one of those knockoffs, yet? I'll give you $45 each. Take it or leave it, said the middle-aged appraiser, as he adjusted his reading glasses on the nose. What the heck? $45. Chen Jin was in great shock. Is he for real? Yes, $45. Take it or leave it. The appraiser started to show his true colors of being a profiteer. No way. Give them back. Chen Jin was furious. $45? They are from the another world. Go ahead, young man. Try somewhere else. I'll eat my hat if you can sell them for more than $30 each, the middle-aged appraiser said sarcastically and handed back the watches without any hesitation. Chen Jin turned around and left, without even looking back. In the evening, at home, Chen Jin had sold everything he could in his bag. The gold rings, gold bracelets, and gold necklaces. There were seven of them, with a total weight of 55 grams. He sold them for $2,200. Five platinum rings weighed 13.5 grams. For these ones, he made $700. After some serious thinking, Chen Jin sold five diamond rings that weren't as good as the other three. He sold them for about $370 each, and made a total of $1,850 profit. None of the mechanical watches were sold the man was right, no one was willing to pay more than $30. Chen Jin kept the pearl necklace the most expensive one. His parents' 25th wedding anniversary was coming soon, they'd planned to go to a studio and take some wedding pictures. Chen Jin decided to give his mother a surprise. Meaning. After all the research conducted in the other world, he had gotten his first pot of gold, which had a total amount of. $4,750. Damn it. Chen Jin was annoyingly upset. This project took him nearly a month, and the research he carried out in the other world only got him $4,750. His getting rich overnight fantasy had fallen apart into little pieces. 
he didn't even make his first pot of gold. It was more like the average income a salaried person would make per month. Believe it or not, I can spend every penny of this in ten minutes. It's easy to become poor, but it's still a long way to go to get rich, Chen Jin said, shaking his head with a big sigh. He had no choice but to calm himself down and try again, as he still had plenty of time. The other world on higher fa, about two days later. Finally, Dali the robot and the team had returned from searching the city. And just as Chen Jin requested they brought back a small car. The five robots pushed, sometimes carried the car on their shoulders, working with one another to bring the car back. Upon arrival, every robot hit the low battery warning level, so they went straight to the charging pile, which Chen Jin brought from Earth and had modified with five extra outlets. A single line could run 1000 watts and charge the batteries of up to five robots simultaneously. The cables for high-efficiency battery chargers also extended from the charging pile, it could run 5000 watts each and charge up to 10 high-efficiency batteries all at the same time. In short, Chen Jin had spent more than $1,000 on the entire charging equipment. Now, back to the small car the team had brought back. From the front, the car looked somewhat boxy, from the side, it looked like the cross-section of a bullet. The car had two doors and four wheels with a low, flat, yet streamlined body shell, there was a picture of an angel printed on the trunk in the back, and some pebble-shaped lights installed in the front and at the back. Overall, the vehicle seemed to have been designed with the theory of fluid mechanics, the beauty of industrial design could be seen from every part of the car. After scraping the thick layer of dirt off the car, Chen Jin brought some brushes and car wash soap, and extended a water pipe from his bathroom for the robots to wash the car. Having been cleaned at least five times, the vehicle now looked newer than ever. It had the color of a sapphire, which Chen Jin absolutely loved. The super sports car we have on Earth like Maserati or Bugatti Veyron are probably nothing compared to this baby. But, it was not a fancy car of any sort. It was just a very common car in this world. At least Chen Jin could see cars like this everywhere on the street in Terry's city. It was an electric car with a battery slot that could install 10 pieces of large 10 kilo high efficiency batteries on the chassis. The total weight of the car was no more than 1.5 tons. It even had an electric motor that could produce up to 5,000 kilowatts, which would be the equivalent of 680 horsepower. Without a doubt, this car was extremely powerful and had excellent endurance. However, he still had to wait a while before he could drive it. Due to being exposed to sun and wind over a long period of time, all four of the rubber tires were badly damaged. The oil and lube for power transmission system, braking system and the electric motor in the engine had gotten too old to be used again, and most of it had run off over time. He had to wash those devices and replace the oil and lubricant with new ones. Therefore, Chen Jin spent the next few days busily fixing this Blue Angel, the name he gave to the car. First, he bought three pairs of tires that had a diameter of 70 centimeters, and asked Debeo to trim off two millimeters of the rims so they could fit right in the tires. Next, after he bought seven or eight buckets of oil and lube, he poured it on the cleaned braking system, transmission system, and electric motor. Then, he tried to turn the car over and start it again. VVV Vroom The Blue Angel had been turned over successfully and was now drivable, but there were still some minor problems. For example, Two out of the four lights were broken, they had to be replaced, and there were some abnormal noises coming from the engine. The genuine leather seats needed to be changed as well, considering the leather was seriously damaged, and gave an unpleasantly strong, pungent smell. Chen Jin had no choice but to teach himself about auto repairs and visit the auto parts marketplace, he bought some parts to replace the old ones in the car after filtering all the other unwanted parts very carefully. Two days later. Now that he had fixed all the malfunctions the Blue Angel had, he was finally able to drive the car without any problems. The driving experience must be much, much better than Dad's Passat. He drove the car around the bottom of the huge crater, he was driving easily 220 km per hour. It was so fast that he felt like he was drifting in mid-air. But he had to pay a significant price for it, too. He had spent nearly $6,000 on repairing Blue Angel. Not only did he spend his last penny, but he even borrowed money from a friend. Looking at his wallet and the available amount in his Alipay account, Chen Jin was enormously stunned. I never knew being into cars was such an expensive hobby to have. And I was only fixing one. Chen Jin murmured to himself. And I thought nothing would cost you more money than Ak. He was too young, Chen Jin realized, and there was still a lot for him to learn about this world. Chapter 17, 
wedding anniversary. August 28. The sun was out, and the sky was clear. It was Chen Jin's parents' 25th wedding anniversary. A very special day. The anniversary for a marriage of 50 years was a golden wedding, so 25 years was half a golden wedding. His father, Chen Gang, had given a lot of thought to it, he took a day off to spend this extraordinary day with his wife, He Li, to do a wedding photo shoot. When they got married 25 years ago, the economic development in the country had been pretty average, people were generally not very wealthy. It was this city, Shanghai, that had the best economy. There weren't too many newlyweds that had the extra money to spend on a wedding photo shoot then. At most, they would take one indoor picture. But now, it was the new era, and life had gotten much better all kinds of wedding photo companies were everywhere. But they were not young anymore. To make up for lost opportunity, Chen Gang suggested that they take some wedding photos to remember the good times they shared. He thought He Li would be really happy and agree with his proposal with excitement. But surprisingly, He Li turned him down cruelly. He Li sneered at him. Ha, wedding pictures? If it weren't for our son, do you think I would have stayed with you for 25 years? I'd have divorced you already. Do you actually think I still love you? Honey, it's been 25 years. How is this still on your mind? I've already forgotten about her. Can you just leave that behind? Chen Gang said, seeming very awkward, with cold sweat on his forehead. Oh, please. Just because you're forgetful doesn't mean I am too. I will never forget how unfaithful you were to me. He Li gnashed her teeth, seeming very resentful. Well, Chen Gang shook his head. He had absolutely no idea He Li was still holding a grudge against him about the affair he had when he was young. They had almost gotten a divorce. Of course he knew he had crossed the line, he acknowledged the mistake, admitted that he was wrong, and had done everything in his power to be a good father and a good husband for the family. However, it'd been 25 years, and He Lee still hadn't forgiven him for what he had done. She took away her love for him and gave it all to their son. Listening to the way she talked to him, and seeing how indifferent she was about the wedding pictures, Chen Gang's heart sank to his stomach. Honey, so, we're not going to do the photo shoot then? I've already paid $1,200 for the down payment, Chen Gang said in a quiet voice. At first, he thought He Lee would love the surprise, but now, he was more worried if he could get his deposit back. Of course we are. But it'll be just me and my son. You'll just stand there and watch. As a woman, why wouldn't she want to take wedding photos? She was just mad at a certain person and didn't want to be in the pictures with him. Okay, sure, sure. Chen Gang's face started to beam with delight, and he hurried to make some arrangements. The morning of the 28th. At the photo shoot site at the Bundan Pudong, the site was by the beach, everything was very scenic. There was the ocean, the beach, even a private yacht. The Chen family had come here for the photo shoot. With the help of the makeup artist, He Li had her makeup done and put on a white wedding dress. Her hands were on the sides of the dress, with the hemline so long that it touched the ground. Wow. Mom. You are beautiful. The most beautiful mother in the world. Chen Jin, who had now changed into his well-pressed suit, gave his mother the compliments she deserved, looking very smart and happy. In fact, He Li had turned 50 this year. Even with all the efforts she'd put in to take care of her skin, she still looked like she was in her 40s. Her figure had turned saggy and floppy, her skin was dull with wrinkles and crow's feet around her eyes but what was the most attractive about her was her maturity and intellectuality, they made her extremely approachable, but with a distance, as if she kept a dignified silence. And it was that kind of unique elegance that made He Li a woman that had average looks so appealing. As Chen Jin called it, a queen. This kind of charisma was also the result of having worked at the tax bureau for over ten years. After being dolled up by the makeup artist, his mother now looked like she was back in her thirties, even twenties, very beautiful, indeed. Look at you, cheeky monkey, you know the right words to say to make me happy. She pointed at his head and couldn't stop smiling. It always made her happy whenever Chen Jin tried to butter her up. Mom, I'm telling you the truth. If I ever find a wife, she must be like you. If I can't find anyone like you, then I'll stay single forever, Chen Jin said, looking all innocent. He just buttered her up again. Like me? Sure, I'll set you up on a blind date tomorrow. He Lee smiled. Let's do it. But only if she's just like you. Smile. 
Another one. Three, two, one. Done. The photographer used his SLR camera to take several sets of pictures from various angles of the family as he squatted down. All of which included pictures of just He Li and Chen Gang. But it was just a few, soon after they took their pictures, He Li pushed him aside and asked Chen Jin to join her. Go away. I want to take more photos with my son. And just like that, Chen Jin listened to his mom, changed into some more suits, and took ten more sets of pictures, as his dad, Chen Gang, watched and joined them once in a while for family photos. Being exhausted from the photo shoot, Chen Jin looked at his dad, who was standing not too far away, and said, Mom, why don't you take some more with Dad? Today is about the two of you. He Lee suddenly looked all disgusted as she held onto his arm and forced her smile at the camera. Your dad is old and ugly. He'll make me look bad. I'm not taking pictures with him. Chen Jin gave a wry grin. Mom, Dad is really good looking. You two look very cute together. Tell him to get lost. My son is the most handsome guy in the whole universe. I'm not taking pictures with him. He Lee said, as she looked at her young son from the side, realizing he somehow looked like her husband when he was young, she couldn't help but lay her head on his shoulder. Fine Chen Jin didn't know what to say. The truth was, the young Chen Gang, his dad, was way more good looking than he was. Even at the age of 50, he was still the more handsome one among the middle-aged men. He didn't look so bad at all after some clean-up and putting his suit on. Chen Jin himself, on the other hand, got the not-so-pretty jeans from his mom. His hand was so sore from holding his mom's hand for a long time, but she wouldn't let go. After the photo shoot, later that evening, Chen Gang did some grocery shopping and, with some help from Chen Jin, made a table full of delicious food for the family. After dinner, Chen Jin took out the presents that he'd prepared. Mom, this is for you. I hope you like it. Chen Jin handed his mom an exquisite box wrapped with silk and said, Mom, why don't you open it? Then, he reached into the pocket on his shirt and casually took something out of it. Dad, this is for you. Oh my. It's gorgeous. He Lee screamed with excitement, and her eyes glowed as she opened the box. She took out the pearl necklace carefully and put it around her neck. Son, how much did it cost you? Where did you buy it? He Lee asked after she took a look at herself in the mirror. Do you like it, Mom? Chen Jin smiled. I love it. I really do. He Lee couldn't keep her hands off the pearls. Son, it must have cost you a fortune, she said, looking up from the necklace. It wasn't much. I'm glad you like it, Mom. Honey, the necklace looks great on you, Chen Gang said, as he looked at her with admiration. With the pearl necklace, he thought his wife looked more graceful and splendid than ever. Then, with great anticipation, he looked at the gift his son gave him a watch. It can't be worse than my wife's pearl necklace, can it? Chen Gang thought as he looked at the watch in his hands very closely. The watch seemed pretty average, nothing special with the design. It was made with solid materials the back case was made of carbon fiber, with a tungsten alloy made watch band. Perhaps this is a brand name watch from Cartier, Rolex, or Armani. Chen Gang's attention had now moved on to the back of the watch. He then saw four letters W-I-K-A. What is this brand? W-I-K-A? I have never heard of this brand. Suddenly, a guess flashed through his mind. It's a knockoff. A domestic knockoff? No packaging, weird brand name, exceptional workmanship but nothing unique about it. If it's not a knockoff, what is it? Chen Gang glanced at his son next to him. Then he looked at his wife, whose face was glowing with happiness. What's up with this unfair treatment, he said in a low voice, forcing a smile. She's his mother, I'm his father. Is that really necessary? But he did not say anything to Chen Jin, instead, he accepted the gift in a dignified manner, and said, Very well. I really like this watch. Ever since Chen Jin was a boy, he had hardly ever given his father any gift. So even if this was some cheap knockoff, Chen Gang still cherished it very much, because his son had, after all, made an effort to find a gift for him. Chapter 18, A Crazy Electricity Bill The day of the 29th, both of his parents were at work and he was home alone. He'd locked his bedroom door and left for Herfa through the portal in his bathroom. In the huge crater, the camp had turned into a pretty large-scale one. There was a tent for storage, a temporary ammo storeroom, a batch of various robot parts, 
and 285 high-efficiency batteries. Dali and the other robots had collected some more high-efficiency batteries from the battlefield recently. The number of the research team had also grown from one to two teams now. The robots, too, had now increased from five to ten. As for the names of the new robots, Chen Jin got lazy and decided to just give them each a code he called the Captain 02, and the team members 0201, 0202, 0203, 0204. If there were more robots, the same naming method would also apply to them. And finally, the Blue Angel that was parked next to the charging pile, it had been charging for the past two days. It had been 48 hours. Chen Jin took a look at the energy bar on the dashboard there was still 32% left before the car was fully charged. The charging cord could run up to 5000 watts, it has already used 240kWh, but still needs 100 more? What? These high efficiency batteries are just like bugs. Chen Jin sighed. What if I introduced the manufacturing technology for these batteries to the people on Earth? It would be pretty easy to make billions of dollars that way, wouldn't it? and become the wealthiest man in the world. Chen Jin shook his head. The most valuable thing on higher fa is actually the much more advanced technology that humans lack on Earth. Technology is the primary production. Having leading technology means owning a gold mine it's way better than owning a piece of gold, and brings you more profits, too. Technology is a kind of information carrier, it's not something you can see. It won't be easy to find. I will have to keep searching until I discover everything on higher fa. Chen Jin muttered to himself as he stared at Blue Angel. Therefore, he hoped to take advantage of the local transportation to speed up his research on the planet. Chen Jin had then decided to take Blue Angel once the battery had been fully charged to explore the city of Teres himself and see if he could find anything good. All of a sudden, the charging signal light on the dashboard went out the charging had stopped. The charging device next to the charging pile started making a wong wong sound as it stopped working as well. The energy-saving light hanging on a tripod in the middle of the camp also went out without warning. What is going on? Why has the power gone out? Chen Jin was very confused. Is the same thing happening on Earth too? He hurried back to the apartment and went to the hallway, having taken a careful look at the main power switch, Chen Jin realized that all the electricity meters in the building were working fine except the one for his apartment. He could still turn on the lights in the hallway. Which meant the power outage didn't happen in other areas. It was only in his apartment. Chen Jin checked the circuit again, making sure there was no short circuit. It was functioning normally. There was only one possibility left he didn't pay the bills. Chen Jin took out his phone and logged onto Alipay, he clicked on online bills payment on the homepage to check the amount so he could get the money ready. Current amount of your arrears, $1,373. What? The number shocked him enormously. I've been using more than 9,000 watts of electricity over the past month? How is that even possible? Even if he was home alone with AC on all summer, he'd still only have to pay 60 to $70 every month for electricity. But 9,000 watts? How did it get so crazy? Come to think of it, Dali and the robots were large consumers of electricity, and the high-efficiency batteries by the charging pile had been charging for a long time. According to the tiered pricing for electricity in Shanghai City, if one exceeded 400 watts per month, he had to pay 15 cents for each exceeding watt. The monthly cycle ended on the 15th, and if the payment was delayed for more than 10 days, they would notify you via a phone call first before they cut off your electricity. Chen Jin didn't receive any phone call, he had absolutely no idea that he owed this much money. But it wasn't too hard to have the power back all he had to do was to pay the bills and the electricity would be back on in 5 minutes. The problem was... $13.73? Where am I going to get that kind of money? Chen Jin had gone bankrupt, he was a total pauper and still owed his friend 740 bucks. With a mirthless smile, he had no choice but to call his mom, hoping she'd lend him some money to take the heat off of him. Son, you said you needed to borrow $1,500 and will pay me back next month. He Lee asked on the phone. Yes, mom. It's really urgent but I will definitely pay you back next month. Son, you must have spent all your savings on that pearl necklace, hey? Tell me, how much did it really cost you? He Lee had done some research on Beidou, and found out that the market price for the necklace her son gave her was at least $7,400. It wasn't too much. Mom, please send me $1,500. It's an emergency. 
I will pay you back next month. No problem. I'll do it right now. Within seconds, Chen Jin received a notification from Alipay, you have received $7,400 from your mother. Mom, $7,400 is too much. I just need $1,500. Chen Jin was a bit surprised. No problem. But I didn't give you all that money for nothing. I have a little request. What kind of request? I've found you a nice lady. Spend some time with her this weekend, get to know her. Hopefully you will get the chemistry going. A blind date? Mom, I don't want to get married yet. I'm not going. Come on, show me some respect. I've already talked her into it and she's agreed to meet you, too. My good boy, don't make me look bad, okay? Ever since He Lee received the pearl necklace from her son, she realized he'd grown up and understood the importance of being a good son. She'd decided to strike while the iron was hot and make him start a family as soon as possible, so that he would become more independent and mature and she would have some grandchildren, too. All right, Mom, you have my word. Chen Jin nodded helplessly. Of course Mom was going to give me an additional condition with that $7,400. Okay. Thanks, son. He Lee smiled with her squinty eyes. Meanwhile, a girl in her tax collector uniform walked into the office with a pile of documents in her arms. She was tall, easy on the eyes, and had a long ponytail at the back of her head, there was an elegant yet capable vibe about her. She put the documents on the desk, and said to He Lee in her clear voice, Director He, these are the papers you requested. I've sorted them out for you. She gently moved them to He Lee's sight. He Lee sized her up as she put down her phone and nodded with great satisfaction. She smiled at this assistant and asked, Little Su, you're 25 this year, right? Seeing anyone. Su Yun blushed and lowered her head. Director, I've never been in love before. Her face had turned so red that it started to burn a little. To others, she seemed to be a distant, stone-cold fox, but with her supervisor He Lee, she was like an innocent little girl who had her guard down and let He Lee see all her secrets. She didn't mind it, in fact, she enjoyed spending time with a supervisor like her. She was always full of energy and ready to work whenever she came to the office. Naturally, He Lee liked this assistant a lot, too, everything about Su Yun just seemed right for her. Now that she'd learned this beauty was still single, He Lee couldn't help but ask, no way. Who would have thought? The most beautiful girl in our department is still single? Don't worry, little Su. I've got this. I'll find you someone nice. Director. I'm too young still. Su Yun mumbled as she pinched her jade-like fingers. Ha 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 ha. He Lee couldn't help but laugh. Chapter 19, Raiding the City of Teres. Make money. I must make money. I must accomplish the small goal of making 15 million dollars. As soon as possible. No time to waste. For the first time, after living at home with his parents for two years, Chen Jin felt his strong desire and motivation to make money. The cost of electricity alone for searching higher fa made him realize how much he needed money. There will always be costs, no matter what business. He'd found a planet, yes, but if he wanted to benefit greatly from higher fa, he would have to invest in it first. For just electricity, the bill for the month was almost $1,500. It was only going to get more expensive from there. And there were other expenditures too. With all the previous expenses, Chen Jin estimated, even a $15,000 investment for each month wouldn't be enough to search higher fa. As for the income he'd made, well, he'd only earned roughly $4,500 so far. Therefore, in order to obtain profits, Chen Jin had to come up with a solution that would not only cut down on the expenses but also increase his earnings. I'm really using too much electricity, the maximum output power for domestic electrical circuits is 30 kilowatts, and I pretty much use all of it. This will cost me at least $1,500 a month, this ridiculous power consumption is going to raise a flag. The Department of Energy will come to check on me. Risky. Plus, the number of my robot squads will continue to grow, and there will be more repair work too for all sorts of electrical devices 30 kilowatts a month for sure isn't going to cut it. The time to build an independent power generating system in the other world is upon us. For instance, a wind turbine or a mini diesel generator, they could both provide more electricity. Solar power would not be a good idea, as the amount of electricity it generates would be very little, besides, 
the sky was always covered in sand clouds, there wouldn't be enough sunlight, and Chen Jin certainly would not have the time to clean all the dusty panels. He could get the robots to do some cleaning, but then the solar power generated from those panels wouldn't be enough to cover the amount of power robots lost from all the dusting, there wouldn't be enough electricity to charge them. And he had to put Earth into consideration, too. Flammables like diesel and gasoline wouldn't be easy to purchase. It seemed like building a wind turbine system was his only option, which would cost him a fortune. To make things worse, he was living on the rents he collected $1,500 a month. It would never be enough. So, needless to say, I must make a lot of money. The next morning, after the Blue Angel was fully charged, Chen Jin drove Dali, Da Tiyou, and Da Bao on a bumpy road into the vast desert. It was bumpy the whole way there. According to the 3D navigation projected from Dali, they needed to drive more than 100 kilometers towards the northeast to get to the city of Teres. Two hours later, from the driver's seat, Chen Jin could see the end of the abandoned roads, suddenly, there was a bunch of bulges with uneven, strange shapes in the far end of the overcast, flat field. There were rectangles, triangles, shell shapes, obelisks, etc. With all the shapes lining up, it was as if they were human shadows standing next to each other, under the dusky, yellow sky in this sand-covered city, they looked like an island in the middle of an ocean. The city of Teres, here we are. They parked the car outside the city. One human and three robots, each carried a snakeskin bag, walking towards the city center. Chen Jin gazed around with tremendous excitement. On the main street in the city, a tall office building with at least 20 floors caught his attention. A high-rise like this in Shanghai City would probably be worth at least $150 million, right? Well, it's mine now. And the one next to it. And that huge shopping mall to the right over there, too. One $150 million after another. Then they walked a few hundred meters more. He saw a district with more than 20 luxurious residential buildings. Chen Jin stared at it, took a minute to let it all sink in, and said to himself, in the real estate market, 10 square feet would cost at least $7,000. For a commercial house as big as 1,000 square feet, the price could be as high as $700,000, there are at least 7 to 800 apartments in this district, if not 1,000, and that number times $700,000, well, this area is worth 3 to $4 billion. And I will be the king of houses with countless properties. Much cooler than freaking John Malone. I could get super rich with just these houses here. Chen Jin knew he was never going to sell any of them, but he just enjoyed the thought of it. Even though he had only $6,000 to his name, he felt like he was the wealthiest man in the world. There was no way he could move those houses, let alone take them back to Earth with him. He could only daydream about it. Cars, trucks, and heavy-duty vehicles that were worth as much as those million-dollar luxurious cars on Earth were everywhere on the streets, too. He couldn't bring them back to Earth whatsoever, but he could drive them on higher fa. Chen Jin had also seen numerous high-tech products. Things like TVs with laser projectors, smart glasses for augmented reality, personal computers with the 8th generation Graphene CPU, foldable phones with AirPlay features, and various intelligent robots, could all be found effortlessly in the city of Teres. He even found a super calculator that managed the whole city in the city hall. Dali told him that the calculating speed of this super calculator was 100 billion times per second, which was five times faster than that of the speed of the fastest super calculator called Summit on Earth. He'd really love to take all these high technology items back to Earth, but they were much too advanced for the society, bringing them back was like bringing a knife to a primitive tribe that only knew about wood sticks there would be consequences. It would increase the chances of this planet being exposed to public. So he would try not to take any of the high-tech stuff. Also, Chen Jin found a lot of ancient calligraphies in a local museum, which he believed to have great artistic values. Among all the paintings there were some oil paintings, even an amateur like Chen Jin knew how good they were. They should sell for a good price. But the history background on Higher Fa was a little different from that of the Earth's. During the Han Dynasty, there was a man named Wang Mang who usurped the throne and changed the history completely. He then built Xian Dynasty, an extremely powerful one that lasted as long as 500 years, which would later reshape the entire history ultimately. The names of all those literary authors and artists on Higher Fa were very different from the ones on Earth, no matter how valuable they may be, they still wouldn't be worth much because they were just totally unheard of. Therefore, due to the butterfly effect, even Chen Jin's own country would not acknowledge items like these ancient calligraphies, 
let alone the Western countries. He might not even be able to sell just one piece of art. After all the calculating and contemplating Chen Jin had done, all that was left to take with him back to earth were, gold, platinum, iron, rubies, jade, and agate. All the other ones were either worthless, or not easy to carry. The problem was, the people of Teres had already taken all the valuables with them before the war broke out, there really wasn't much left for Chen Jin to take. The research lasted seven days, Chen Jin sent both robot squads to search the city inside and out, completely and thoroughly. And here's what he'd found. Gold and gold jewelry, with a total weight of 1,415 grams, worth roughly $30,000, silver and silver products, weighed 28.6 kilograms, worth about $7,000, and 155 pieces of platinum jewelry and 173 iron adornments worth at least $70,000. There were also 359 pieces of all sorts of rubies and jades, but Chen Jin was no appraiser, he couldn't tell how much they were worth. In addition, he'd found more than 1,000 watches, but he took only 50 of those that were either studded with gold, diamond, or ruby. Among them all, there was one that had not only diamond studs, but also a giant, all-natural blue ruby as big as a pigeon egg. It was lavishly gorgeous and could definitely sell for a great price. Apart from all that, Chen Jin had also taken 53 ancient calligraphies. He didn't even know why he took them. Probably because they looked nice. Finally, there were all kinds of random stuff. He'd also found more than 100 pairs of shoes, clothes, and bags for both men and women from the storage room in a high-end clothing store, and more than 20 bags of different sorts. These clothes and bags are so much nicer, they make you look more stylish too. The people here had a much better grasp for fashion than the people on Earth do. Some of the clothes seem a bit non-mainstream when you put them on, but at least I won't ever have to buy any more clothes. I have a life supply of clothes, bags, and shoes. Especially bags. Back when I was in college, I bought a couple of low-end bags for my girlfriend at the time, which cost me a $600. She wasn't too happy about it and thought they were humiliating. She tossed them away after a few days, it was my allowance for the month and my video game recharge. Then they broke up. Actually. Chen Jin broke up with her. He felt nothing but free and relieved. No one would ever make any plans with his game recharge money anymore. But he was no longer scared of relationships now that he had everything he wanted. Clothes, shoes, bags, diamonds, you name it. He could even build a palace for all his girlfriends if he wanted to. However, Chen Jin was tired of having a girlfriend. It was better to be single. Let's go. We've searched all the houses here. There's really nothing else that's worth taking back to Earth, this time, I should be able to make $150,000 with these. Having finished searching the city, Chen Jin returned to the huge crater camp. Chapter 20, Blind Date At the huge crater camp, next to the storage tent, all the items he took from the city of Teres were put together, and formed a cone-shaped pile of jewelry that had a diameter of more than one meter. All of which included gold, diamonds, platinum, iron, rubies, jades, and watches. They sparkled with brightness so intense that it almost blinded his eyes. Next to the pile of jewelry was a pile of random stuff, clothes, shoes, bags, and calligraphies. In addition to the ones that were already at the camp, all the high-tech items of laser TVs, personal computers, phone projectors, video games, electronic dictionaries, super calculator, and a massive heavy-duty vehicle, were still in the city. Chen Jin assigned Dali and other robots to bring them all back to camp one way or another. Yes, Master. Dali saluted and took on the mission. Chen Jin nodded and headed back to his bedroom as he climbed the metal ladder with a heavy snakeskin bag full of treasure on his shoulder. In the bedroom, looking at the bag by his feet, Chen Jin gave it a good kick with his hands on his hips and said to himself, now I must come up with a strategy that can help me make a killing. At the dinner table that evening, from the constant yawning and the sleepy eyes on Chen Jin's face, he Li knew her son had just woken up. A lot of times she moved her lips and was very tempted to nag him about his recent behavior. Where on earth have you been lately? Why are you acting like this? But she'd resisted the urge, considering her son was a grown-up after all. Instead, she said to him softly, Son, what have you been up to lately? You seem very tired. His father, Chen Gang, made a noise of disdain and said, What else could he possibly be doing other than playing video games all night long? Don't you know your son by now? He Li turned around and stared at him with irritation, 
her cold-blooded face and merciless eyes made Chen Gang tremble. He stopped talking immediately. I haven't played any games these days. I've been busy making money, Chen Jin mumbled, as he gobbled up his bowl of rice. Making money? While you lie on your bed. Ha! Huh. Having heard his son's explanation, Chen Gang couldn't help but turn on his sarcastic mode again. He knew his own son too well, he'd believe anything his son claimed to be doing in the bedroom, except making money. Smirking was the only response he could give. Shut your mouth. He Lee gave him another cruel, harsh stare to make sure there would be no more words coming out of his mouth. Then, she turned to Chen Jin and said in a loving voice, Son, what kind of money have you been making? You're not selling anime garage kits, are you? She knew her son was good at making those garage kits, and that they were worth a lot of money. Pretty much. Mom, please don't ask so many questions. All right. He Lee nodded. But then something else came to her mind. Son, are you free this weekend? I'd set up a blind date for you last weekend, but you were busy so we cancelled it. She was kind enough to reschedule to this weekend. Son, don't stand her up again this time, okay? Just then, he Lee frowned and seemed discouraged. She thought her son had grown up and was ready to start a family. But no. He was not. Far from it. He was still his same old self who stayed in his room all day long, and even bailed on the date she'd planned for him, resulting in her apologizing and making excuses for him, saying he was too busy working to make it and that he was very sorry. She had no choice but to postpone the whole thing. He was lucky the girl was very understanding and thought him a good, ambitious man. But they would not reschedule again this time. It would embarrass He Lee enormously otherwise, and would definitely offend the girl. So if he dared to turn her down again, she was ready to give him serious punishment. He Lee was determined to make this blind date work. It'd be ridiculous, if not. I've finished some work. I'm free this weekend. Hearing these words from Chen Jin relieved He Lee immensely. The storm that was forming in her suddenly went away. In that case, son, why don't you attend the date, she said in a benign manner. Sure. When is it? How does Saturday morning sound? No problem, Chen Jin responded briskly. He Lee was overwhelmed with joyful excitement, she kept bringing food to her son's bowl. Here, eat some more, son. Then came Saturday morning. For the first time, Chen Jin woke up and had breakfast upstairs before it was even 8 o'clock. He Lee was extremely surprised by this out of bed before 8 a.m. phenomenon. She could hardly recall a time where he got out of bed by 8 in the past two years, let alone having breakfast. She was worried he would have heartburn. Seeing Chen Jin gulping down his congee and dumplings got He Lee hallucinating again. Maybe, my son really has matured? And indeed it was her hallucination. 8 a.m. was usually when he was in his deepest, sweetest sleep. Why would he want to leave his bed that early? He woke up early for the same reason as yesterday he was ready to go to Shanghai City with his bag of jewelry. He intended to find the best buyers to sell his treasure, and make the fast buck he'd long desired. As for the blind date, he planned on finishing it within an hour. He had to go for his mother's sake. Plus, the date this time was a daughter of the mid-level female leader in the Trade and Industry Bureau. She and his mom spent a lot of time together because of work and obviously got on really well with each other, moreover, their family backgrounds were very similar he and the date were basically a match made in heaven. So naturally, both his mom and her mom had high expectation from them. From the two pictures of the date, Chen Jin could tell she had a stunning face along with nice legs and long hair she was definitely an eight. He was very content. There was nothing he could be picky about her appearance. However. He honestly just did not plan on marrying anyone anytime soon. At least not before 30. The average age for the people of Shanghai to get married is 34. I'm not going to be the one to break the record. Besides, he had so many two-dimensional wives already. He was never lonely or anything. And so, about this blind date, he apologized inwardly to his mother. I'm sorry, mom. He still had to at least fake it throughout the date regardless. For this blind date, he took out a fair amount of clothes from his closet downstairs after breakfast, looking for something nice that would present himself in a polite, confident manner, with his mother being the quality control. He'd changed into one set of garments after another. Mom, this plaid shirt and these cropped pants look good on me. Very stylish, no. No, the plaid shirt is too mature for you. Not charming. 
He Li shook her head with her arms crossed. How about this printed t-shirt and these capri sweatpants? Don't I look athletic? No, it's too casual. Okay, mom, these are my special clothes. I don't usually wear them. If you still don't find them appropriate, then I really have nothing to wear. He put on his jazz hat, a t-shirt printed with saber, and a pair of black pants printed with a formation of white starburst, looking remarkably dashing. He Lee smacked him in the head. Enough with these childish clothing. Go try on something else. I don't have anything nicer. Chen Jin patted his head. Mom will take you shopping then. But I wouldn't be able to wear them today anyway, he said as he shook his head. All of a sudden, it hit him. Mom, wait outside the door, please. I still have some I have yet to try on. He closed the door and made his way to the portal in the bathroom. Within seconds, he came back with a bag of clothes. Creak the bedroom door opened again as it made some creaking noises. He Lee's eyes opened wide in surprise and recognition. The Chen Jin in front of her had achieved minimalist style, he was neat and tidy. The material of the clothes he had on was exquisite and very well cropped with streamlined shapes. Not only did they flatter his figure, but they were also courteous and respectful. Son, this is impressive. It'd be perfect for the date, wouldn't it? Chen Jin turned around and around. It sure would. You look very charismatic, son. She gave him a thumbs up. Shall we? Mom went upstairs to grab her keys and Chen Jin took the bag filled with jewelry and went downstairs to wait for her in the parking lot. Chapter 21, A Mommy's Boy? At the city center, in the most prosperous Jinling West Street sat a tranquil tea house that had an excellent word-of-mouth reputation. On the third floor, Chen Jin sat waiting inside the luxurious private room. He had sent away his parents who came together with him telling them to wait for news at home. If first impressions were good, a blind date could drag on for a while. They might go for some shopping, watch a movie and do some other leisure activities, even a whole day might not be enough for them. Okay, I'll go back with your dad. Son, grasp this opportunity. Mom will be waiting for your good news. Giving him encouraging look, he Lee grinned from ear to ear. Her son was so proactive. This matchmaking session should be a done deal. Glancing down on his wrist at the watch that Chen Jin gave him, Chen Gang checked the time and said, It's 8.50 a.m., she'll arrive in 10 minutes. We'll go back first. Nodding his head, Chen Jin saw his parents leave. Sitting inside the private room, he held a cup of Tai Guan Yin tea as he continued to wait. It was 9.20 a.m. in the blink of an eye, yet his partner had still not arrived. He played some mobile games on his phone until 9.50 a.m. and there was still no trace of his partner. Chen Jin started to scrunch up his brows. He could still forgive her if she was 30 minutes late, but she was late for almost an hour. This could only mean that she did not treat this blind date seriously at all. I'll wait for another 10 minutes, if she's still not here by then, I'll leave. I've got things to do, I don't have so much time to waste with you. Burying his head in his mobile game again until 10 a.m. on the dot, he still saw neither hide nor hair of his partner. Fine. I'll leave. Keeping his mobile, Chen Jin stood and picked up the backpack on the sofa. He was ready to go to the front desk to pay the bill and leave. As he reached the entrance to the private room, he saw a beautiful silhouette approaching him in a hurry. Spotting Chen Jin, she stopped walking and asked, Are you Chen Jin? The partner that my mother introduced to me for this blind date. Sizing her up without missing a detail, Chen Jin noticed that she was wearing a purple floral chiffon dress and aviators, had a tall and slim build, long hair, pretty features, and refined makeup. On her feet was a pair of high-heeled sandals to flatter her long beautiful legs. His first impression was that she was much more beautiful in person, her photo did not do her justice. Hearing her words, Chen Jin nodded, Yes, I'm Chen Jin. You must be Yuan Lin here. That's right, I'm Yuan Lin, your partner for this blind date. Where are you going with your bag? Yuan Lin asked upon seeing the backpack in his hands. Chen Jin answered honestly, I'm going to the front desk to pay the bill. Yuan Lin originally had a positive first impression regarding him, however it turned negative in a flash. With a slight scowl, she explained, the traffic jam on the roads was a little severe today. I was not deliberately late, can't you spare some effort in waiting just a little bit? Oh then let's go sit in the room. Feeling slightly awkward, Chen Jin retreated back into the private room. Yuan Lin walked in and sat across from him. Chen Jin smelled a very pleasant fragrance permeating the entire room. 
he called over the service staff and ordered a flask of 388 UGN Long Jing tea. Displaying his gentlemanly behavior, he poured a cup for the woman sitting across him. After which was almost ten minutes of silence. Elegantly, Yuan Lin took a sip of tea and spoke straightforwardly. Let's talk about something. Chen Jin asked, talk about what? We can talk about your work, what kind of job do you do? Chen Jin shook his head, it's just a normal job, there's nothing much to talk about. Then, let's talk about your interests and hobbies. What do you like to do? Chen Jin started to ramble, yes, I like to game and watch anime. Those are my favorite things to do, finally he asked, do you like those? Shaking her head, Yuan Lin replied, no, I don't. I've never really checked them out. You actually don't like gaming and anime, are you a real person? How can there be someone who doesn't like gaming and anime, you're such a loser. With an agitated expression, he ended his spiel saying, we have no common topics between us. Yuan Lin was stumped speechless. Scowling, she thought, she had her own interests and hobbies. She passed all ten grades in piano, eight grades in English and even started her own company. Why would she ever touch such demoralizing things like games and anime? It was she who thought that this man in front of her had no common topics with her. She could not communicate with him. It was to the extent that she thought that she could not continue this conversation anymore and wanted to leave. But. This blind date was very important to her mother. She was reminded of the assistance that he Lee, the director of accounting in the tax bureau, could provide. If the two families united, there would be many benefits in the making. Thinking about this, Yuan Lin temporarily suppressed the impulse to leave and decided to make an effort to understand her partner. Restraining her impatience, she asked many questions. For example, she touched on topics like family upbringing, education, the three principles of knowledge, and daily life, etc. In the end, Yuan Lin was greatly disappointed. It was because no matter what questions she asked, this man could not stop mentioning my mom every three sentences. Whenever he answered a question, he liked to tack these three words, my mom said, onto the beginning of his opinion. Moreover, the opinions that this fellow expressed on the topic of marriage simply drove you and Lin up the wall. My mom says that if I'm not satisfied with my wife, I can marry another. But there is only one mother, if my mother is gone, I cannot have another one. So, I must be very filial to her. After I'm married, I hope that my wife will be like me and show obedience to my mother. Everything that she says is right, listening to her is absolutely the right thing to do. On the other hand, if we act carelessly on our own, we'll never do anything right. Also, I do not wish to see my wife anger my mom by engaging in conflicts with her. My mom gave birth to me and raised me, she struggled her whole life. I find it unacceptable if she had to endure bullying from her daughter-in-law instead of enjoying her old age. Since we are living together as one family, someone would have to compromise in situations. My mom has a very good temperament, she would never hurt another person. If there was a conflict between her and her daughter-in-law, then it's definitely not my mother's fault. At this point, Yuan Lin was so pissed off she simply could not listen to this anymore. Picking up her bag, she stood and frankly said, Sorry, I don't think we're suitable. I'll make a move first. I'll pick up the bill at the front desk. Oh Chen Jin nodded his head dully. I too, think that we're not too suitable. You don't have to pay the bill, I'll do it. Standing up, he took great strides towards the front desk. Yuan Lin also left as if she was fleeing from the tea house. Too scary, it was simply too scary. When she returned home, Yuan Lin still felt some lingering fear in her heart. Mother Yuan walked over and asked with some curiosity, Lin Lin, why are you back so quickly? How did the blind date go today? Hugging her pillow, Yuan Lin replied, don't ask about it anymore mom. I almost fell into a death trap. Him and I, we are not suitable. Really? Mother Yuan was very surprised. That fellow doesn't seem too bad. He looks tall and handsome. I heard from director He Lee that her son works a stable job, is motivated to better himself and even knows how to prepare meals and keep the house clean. He is well-mannered and is especially filial towards his parents. It's hard to find such a fine fellow nowadays, how can you not be suitable? So what if he had all these good qualities? Mom, do you know that he's a mommy's boy? What? A mommy's boy? Mother Yuan's expression drastically changed. This was truly frightening and shocking. There goes a saying, 
never marry a mommy's boy or a helicopter sister. If one marries a mommy's boy, it means that the marriage will never be a happy one, one will definitely suffer grievances. Life thereafter will be hellish. Yuan Lin had a best friend who married a mommy's boy. Her mother-in-law's bullying pushed her to her limits. Every day her face would be awash with tears. She reluctantly endured the situation for three years. Even though the husband had a very good family background, they still ended up divorcing. Once you meet a mommy's boy, it was the same as meeting a death trap. Hearing her daughter's explanation of the general situation, Mother Yuan stopped expressing her incomprehension and changed her stance. She now supported her daughter's decision. How would she not know the terror of a mommy's boy? Mother Yuan was very suspicious though. How did a woman as brilliant and capable as director He Lee raise her son into a mommy's boy? Following this thought, she immediately came to a realization. Precisely because director He Lee was brilliant and capable, it made sense that her son became a mommy's boy. It was similar to how her daughter, Yuan Lin, was a mommy's girl. There was no intrinsic difference between the two of them. However for the sake of her daughter's lifelong happiness, she will never allow her to marry a mommy's boy and suffer grievances in another family. After all she only had one daughter. Thus, the follow-up for this blind date was ended for unknown reasons. Chapter 22, Three Million Dollars For three days straight, Chen Jin visited all the pawn shops, auction houses and both small and large-scale jewelers in the business district. Every time he got rejected, he would go to a new place. He paid a visit to any shop that had even a little bit of reputation and credibility. He would find the boss or manager of the shop and offer to sell his precious metals and jewelry. To prevent himself from attracting attention, at each shop, he displayed only a small quantity of jewelry to offer for sale. The money value of the jewelry traded was also limited to around $100,000. He avoided entering more than three of the chain stores from the same brand, even if each store was separated by a long distance. Chen Jin entrusted the few most valuable items, including the watch that was embedded with a sapphire as big as a pigeon's egg, to Sotheby's auction house in order to get a better price. With its centuries-long history, Sotheby's would be able to help him sell off the items. A coordinator from the auction house had promised that his personal details would be kept strictly confidential. In addition, Chen Jin handed over five oil paintings and three antiques to Sotheby's. These oil paintings and antiques had unknown authorships and provenance in an eccentric style. Although they had a certain artistic value, their unclear provenance put them at a disadvantage. The auctioneer in charge told him that they could help to auction them, but he could not guarantee a good price. It could be entirely possible that no one would bid on it. Chen Jin said, it's fine. As long as it can be auctioned off, I'll be okay even if it sells for only $50,000 or $100,000. It'll be good if they could go for a higher price. Try your best to not let it pass without a bid. The other party affirmed that the request was okay. Within three days, by running like this to more than 30 business organizations, Chen Jin had basically sold all the easy-to-sell jewelry that he possessed. So, how much money was earned from his sales? Not much, not even $3 million. From what he had, 1,400 plus grams of gold was sold for $260,000. 28.6 kilograms of silver was sold for $50,000. 300 plus pieces of platinum and diamond accessories were sold for $680,000. He had about 350 pieces of jewels and various gemstones. Some were of high quality while others were fake, hence the big difference in prices too. Chen Jin was not too knowledgeable about jewels and gemstones and had probably paid a steep learning fee. But even so, he managed to sell those jewels for $1,650,000. Excluding the sapphire embedded watch, the 50-plus gold-plated watches were sold for average prices. He received a total of $320,000 from those. The grand total was $2,960,000. The 10-odd items that he had entrusted to Sotheby's were still not auctioned off and it would be some time before the proceeds appeared in his account. So, from the start until now, the profits that he acquired from scouring the city of Terry's was not even $3 million. What? After raking through all the high-value items in a city with a population of 100,000, they were only sold for less than $3 million? What kind of epic joke was this? But this was the truth. On one hand, the civilians of Terry's had brought along many of their belongings of value and the remaining treasures were slim pickings. On the other hand, it was related to the social customs and habits of the people in Z country. From his endless bounding across the city these past few days, Chen Jin reached a conclusion, 
the majority of Z countries people adored brand new goods and hated second-hand goods. With the exception of cultural artifacts that were better with age, other things were severely devalued once they were used or old. For example, watches, cars, clothes, computers and mobile phones etc. Their rate of devaluation was very high. In Z country, not many people liked second-hand goods. Certain goods which had been through a certain number of hands would be degraded to the level of rubbish or even worse. People would express a deep level of dislike, shame, and rejection towards them. Naturally, those items could not be sold for a reasonable price. Thus, Chen Jin could only shake his head. This devaluation is too severe. When you want to buy those items, they may cost you upwards of $30 million. But when you sell it, you can't even get $3 million for it. This is simply too. F. King Hell. Moreover, once he sold this batch of precious metals and jewels, he had no intention of selling any more of these even if he did find more after scouring the city of Terry's the next time. Or to put it more accurately, he would not sell his precious metals and jewels on a face-to-face -face basis anymore. He was worried that it would attract attention from others and subsequent investigations. Mom works at the tax bureau as a middle management officer. What will others think when they notice that I've brought so many precious metals and jewels for sale? Z country has a law that makes it illegal for one to own large amounts of assets that has no clear provenance. If I am unable to explain the origins of these precious metals and jewels that I possess, I cannot escape from that particular law. I could possibly be thrown into jail for a few years. I might even implicate mom. So this was the last time that Chen Jin would personally do business face to face. This was a one-off business deal. He would have to use other means to earn money the next time. Although $3 million is not much, it's still enough to last me for a while. Ah it's going to take a long time to reach this little goal of 1 billion. Shaking his head and sighing, Chen Jin silently lambasted, Billionaire Wang, are you sure that $1 billion really is a little goal? Why do I feel that this goal is a little too big? During dinner, He Li suddenly put down her chopsticks and asked Chen Jin with an expression full of concern, Son, how did yesterday's blind date go? Are you still in contact with Lin Lin? Um after some consideration, Chen Jin said, Our chat went well yesterday, we were pretty happy talking to each other. I also gave her my WeChat contact. But, she did not add me as a friend after we parted ways. Perhaps she was too busy. Chen Jin ad libbed his lies. Raising his head, Chen Gang interrupted, If she still hasn't contacted you by now, it means that she's just not that interested anymore. Nodding his head, Chen Jin said, Yes, I think her interest has waned too. Glaring at Chen Gang, she then turned to look at Chen Jin and said with a drawn out breath, Son, I was talking to Lin Lin's mother on the phone and asked how your date went. I could hear from the implication in her words that they were not pleased with your behavior. He Li asked, Son, did you say something inappropriate? Shaking his head, Chen Jin denied, No, Mom, I didn't carelessly shoot my mouth off. Then why would Lin Lin's mother say that you are not suitable for her daughter? Tell me about the situation yesterday, mom can analyze it with you and find out where the problem lies. Mom what's there to analyze? A failure is a failure, there's nothing to analyze. I too, think that I'm not that suitable with you and Lin. We have nothing in common, Chen Jin was feeling somewhat impatient as he grumbled, Z country is full of women, why are you so fixated on her? You dash glaring at Chen Jin. He Li felt rage and frustration at his nonchalant demeanor. Yuan Lin was the blind date partner that I had chosen for you after a meticulous selection process. Did you think it was so easy to find a suitable match that is your social equal nowadays? This little twerp was not treating it seriously. He was even trying out his little tricks to get up to something mischievous. I had thought that you were sensible, but you are actually still so mischievous. He Li was filled with discontent and despondence. However she did not show that she was upset. She merely put on a happy facade again and gently said, Okay, since this person didn't work out, I will arrange another partner for you next weekend. It's hard to say, but maybe you'll fancy the next one. No, don't. Don't. Chen Jin waved his hands, Mom, don't arrange any more blind dates. I don't want to go. I have some things on the next week and will be busier. I don't have time for a blind date. How about the week after? I should be very busy then too. Wielding her trump card, He Li said, Son, recently, I've been planning to buy another house in the north of the city. The down payment is about $1 million with a monthly mortgage payment of $30,000.
but, I don't have that much funds on me. Son, do you think I should buy the house? She would not believe that she could not keep this disobedient boy in check. Buy, you have to buy it. If you don't buy a few more houses now, it will be impossible when the government implements cooling policies. Very unexpectedly, Chen Jin expressed his support. He even took out his mobile phone from his pocket, opened his Alipay account and transferred $50,000 to his mom. Ring the notification alarm for the successful fund transfer rang. Chen Jin told He Li, Mom, I'm returning the $50,000 that you lent me. I have money now. Chen Gang was shocked, where did you get that $50,000? You have enough money to return your mom's loan. Chen Jin explained, I've been working recently and earned some money, about $100,000. Filled with curiosity, Chen Gang remarked, $100,000 is pretty good. What do you do to earn this kind of money? Scratching his head, Chen Jin replied, I'll keep that a secret, he <laughs> he. Suddenly, he heard loud sobbing. Boohoo. Boohoo hoo hoo the wailing became louder and more heart-wrenching. Turning his head, Chen Jin was immediately taken aback. Mom was crying a flood of tears. Mom, what's wrong? Wife, why are you crying? He Li continued crying, boohoo hoo. Chen Jin stood up in a panic. Walking to her side to comfort her, he said, Mom, don't be like this. What did I do wrong? Chen Gang shook her shoulder. Wife. Wife, what's wrong? Throwing herself into Chen Gang's arms, He Li loudly cried, My son doesn't want me anymore. With sweat anxiously beating on his forehead, Chen Jin stamped his feet. Mom, you misunderstood. I never meant that I don't want you anymore. Nonetheless, He Li still cried without a care, Wah wah wah. Quickly, you little twerp, take your money back. What a twerp, how could you return what your mom gave you? Can you afford to return the sentiment behind it? Grasping the situation, Chen Gang scolded his son harshly. Yes, yes, yes. Mom, I was wrong. I will take the money back. Immediately. Taking his mom's phone, Chen Jin opened her Alipay account and returned every single cent of the $50,000 that he had transferred. After that, both father and son cajoled her for more than an hour straight. Barely holding back her tears, He Li did not resume her normal state until Chen Jin agreed to participate in a blind date on the week after. Then, she finally stopped crying altogether. Chapter 23, Laser TVs Chen Jin truly could not defend against mom's techniques. Her acting was too professional and too real. Chen Jin, who was initially armed with a stubborn and tough attitude, was instantly cowed. Tears are a woman's greatest weapon. Moreover it was his own mother, how could he not back down when faced with her tears? Well, a blind date it is. I shall fight fire with fire. Shedding my bachelor status, humph. It's impossible, nobody can take me down. Having prepared his countermeasures, Chen Jin's heart was filled with confidence. On the planet of Hyer Fa, at the camping ground in the huge crater, some significant changes had taken place. The robots, including Dali, had brought back some items from the city of Teres. They were not precious metals and jewelry, but some high-tech products, amongst which were some laser TV boxes about the size of a Rubik's Cube. The laser TV box was kind of similar to film projection in traditional cinema, where it projected an HD-quality video via a beam of light. However, the videos projected were mostly of 8K UHD quality, the images were ultra-clear. In addition, after putting on the specialized glasses to view the 3D videos under a specific format, it would feel as if a movie was being played out right in front of your eyes. One would feel an even higher level of immersion. I think a similar kind of laser TV has already been launched on Earth. Doesn't Dami Company sell a type of laser TV for only $9,999? It's just that it has larger make and the video quality is only 1080p. Moreover, it can't play 3D videos, so the viewing experience is not too different from watching normal TV. The laser TV that I have right now is roughly about one-fifth of the size of the Dummy laser TV, and can be enlarged to half its size. As for its other features, there was no need to do significant modifications on them. It could be manufactured on Earth straight away and sell like hotcakes for sure. Without a doubt, it would be wildly popular. The laser TV had a small make and was light and portable. The projected video could be freely expanded or shrunk on a 30 to 150 inch surface. 
with a relatively high video quality of 8K and the capacity to play videos in 3D format, it was very clear that the laser TV was the trend of future development. If Chen Jin entered this industry, his future wealth prospect would certainly be rosy. Furthermore, he would not have to worry that it would lead to too great of a problem. This was because the laser TV was a product that was already available on Earth. The model that he would bring back was not based on wholly new technology from a futuristic era. It was only a product made with a slightly more advanced technology, so its impact on Earth would not be too revolutionary. One must be aware, to be half a step ahead of the crowd makes you a genius but to be a full step ahead makes you a lunatic. Moreover, you would be targeted as a cash cow. The laser TV that Chen Jin held was a product that was half a step ahead and could definitely be introduced into Earth. Similar to the robot vacuum sweeper, the laser TV could be included in Chen Jin's business development plan. However, he did not yet possess the technology needed to manufacture these laser TVs. Thus, he could only let the idea ferment in his mind. I must increase the strength and magnitude of my exploration on higher fa in order to find a way to get my hands on this technology. Besides this, Chen Jin also set his vision on other high-tech products, such as the home computer. The home computers on higher fa were not too different than the ones on Earth. It had a squarish CPU, an ultra-thin curved screen and even its mouse and keyboard were very similar to those on Earth. One can infer that even after a 100 years, there would not be too big a change to home computers. The outer appearance would not be greatly modified. However, the home computers on higher fa could not be brought back to Earth. It was because the CPU inside the all-solid motherboard was made of graphene, which is an entirely new nanomaterial. With a well-crafted technological process of 3 nanometers, the output of work could reach 100 GHz while significantly reducing power consumption. Its overall capability was more than 20 times greater than that of the most advanced CPU on Earth. It was technology that was definitely ahead by more than a step. He could not imagine the uproar that it could cause if he brought it back to Earth now. As someone who liked to keep a low profile, Chen Jin was obviously unequipped to deal with such a complex scenario. He had an even greater desire to not attract any attention. The home computer category had to be put on hold temporarily. However, there was also a collapsible mobile phone that could project images and videos. The phone had a 4.8-inch collapsible screen that could be expanded from its surface. It also had touchscreen functions. Its screen projection function, however, needed to be used with specialized smart glasses in order to see the content of the projection. Hence, it was excellent for protecting one's privacy. The phone worked primarily via motion sensing. With only the size of a wristwatch, it could project a virtual screen of 5 to 15 inches. Chances of a fault happening in its operations were extremely low as it was installed with a high-precision microwave radar. Furthermore, it came equipped with a smart language assistant that could accurately recognize and distinguish more than 99.9% .9 of sentences' meanings. Its intelligence was equivalent to that of an 18-year-old human. Hence, the screen projector mobile phone was yet again another high-tech product that was ahead of Earth by more than a step. I'll have to wait at least 10 years before there'll be similar screen projector phones available on Earth. It's not yet time for it to face the world. There were also handheld game units and learning devices. Both of these had an appearance that seemed to be composed by flat boxes. The game unit came with two standalone Bluetooth joysticks while the learning device came with a touch pen. Both had screen projector functions. They could project within a range of 10 to 30 inches. However, there was a particular handheld game unit with high-end configurations that used a laser projection technology similar to the laser TV. Its projected screen had a maximum size of 120 inches. It felt so awesome playing games on this screen size. Grasping the high-end handheld game unit under Dali's guidance and interpretation, he played a game called Drive Angry. The beautiful scenery in the game was reminiscent of those in movies, combined with advanced ray tracing techniques and a large projected screen. Playing an intense and explosive yet smooth chase scene made Chen Jin shout with joy. This is definitely how games should be like in the future. Letting go of the joysticks, Chen Jin sighed emotionally. Under normal rates of progression, how long must I wait before there will be games like this available on Earth? Standing at his side, Dali heard his muttering and interrupted his thoughts. My master, this handheld game unit that you are playing now is actually a technological product on higher fa that has been culled as being too outdated. The technology behind this game had stopped progressing about 8 or 9 years ago and it had not been updated or renewed for more than 10 years. The games loaded into it are antiquated and not popular amongst the humans, only teenagers and children play it occasionally to pass time. 
the grown UPS don't play these games. What? Dali's words caused Chen Jin to go red with embarrassment. He gave an awkward cough. An outdated product. Technology that had been stuck for more than ten years. The games that were loaded into it were antiquated. The grown UPS didn't play them. These words made Chen Jin felt like he wanted to kick the game unit and order Dali to tear them apart, reducing them to scraps of junk. Damn it, it was too embarrassing. He was praising it to high heavens not one moment ago, and Dali had immediately degraded it to the level of trash. Dali, then why don't you tell me? What is considered a good game? A game for the grown UPS. Gritting his teeth, Chen Jin bit out each word slowly. If Dali was unable to give a satisfactory answer, Chen Jin, in his current unhappy and resentful mood, would have to punish it harshly to put it back in its place. It's this, my master. Dali walked to the pile of high-tech items. Bending at his waist and searching through the assortment of haphazardly stacked electronics, it fished out a worn-out, modeled headgear that had several delicate wires attached to its surface. It placed the headgear in front of Chen Jin. This is a simulated reality headset, master. It was once bought by over 70% of the humans on this planet. They lived, worked, gamed, and enjoyed their artificial lives in the world of simulated reality. A great amount of their time was spent here daily. Compared to this headset, those outdated handheld game units can only be considered as children's puzzle games. A simulated reality headset? Fixing his gaze on it, Chen Jin felt a tremor in his heart. Higher Fa actually has such an awesome item as a simulated reality headset? Chapter 24, Zhao Xian A Simulated Reality Headset Its grand reputation preceded it. With the simulated reality headset, one could experience reality in the virtual matrix and play massive online games in it. But the truth was that the simulated reality headset was only a trendy concept on Earth, it was never truly realized. It had not stepped out of the conceptual zone to become a tangible object. At most, it had mutated into the so-called VR, which enabled one to be immersed in the experiences of some interactive 3D scenarios. However it was still a far stretch from the legendary simulated reality headset. In order to make the simulated reality headset into a tangible object, the issues surrounding the control of brainwaves and connections to the nervous system would have to be resolved first. Players could move about freely in the simulated world while the body would remain motionless in reality. Moreover, based on the strength of responses from the nervous system, the level of reality should reach 10%, 20%, or even 60%. The higher the level of reality, the better. It would be best if it was nearest to 100%. Dali told Chen Jin that the simulated reality headset that he had was an 8th generation product manufactured by Green Continental Company. It could achieve an 87% level of reality. It possessed the highest technological standard in the range of simulated reality headsets. A simulated world with an 87% level of reality. I wonder what kind of experience would that be? A look of intense yearning appeared on Chen Jin's face. But, even with the simulated reality headset, he was still unable to play its games. It was because all the remote servers had either been destroyed or shut down. Without a connection to the internet and no cloud data, one could not enter the simulated reality with just the headset. To Chen Jin, this was undoubtedly a regret. Hey! Isn't there a super calculator in the town hall in the city of Teres? Does it have the data needed to enter the simulated reality? Dali said, that calculator may be able to fire up the system of the simulated reality headset, but master, the supercalculator uses a very large amount of power. To start that calculator, it needs at least 100 kilowatts of electrical power. We do not have that amount of power. 100 kilowatts. Chen Jin was somewhat tongue-tied. It seemed like the power shortage at the camp needed to be resolved urgently. He had to think of a way to get some power supply equipment over here. You all get that supercalculator back to camp, I will think of a way to solve the shortage of electrical power. Yes. Master. Dali accepted this task. Besides this, he had to increase the speed of his exploration of higher fa. Actually, Chen Jin had always been putting effort into it. After scouring the city of Teres, he sent out Exploration Squad No. 2 on Blue Angel to survey the surroundings of the huge crater, up to about a distance of a few hundred kilometers. With this, he could create a map of the surrounding areas. Squad No. 2 returned to the campground yesterday, and reported their results. Master, the survey of the campground's surroundings have been completed. We found 53 abandoned small towns, 128 abandoned farms and one abandoned factory. 
Chen Jin's eyes gleamed, and he asked, An abandoned factory? What kind of factory is it? A furniture manufacturing factory, master. Is there any valuable technological information inside the factory? No, that factory had been abandoned for a very long time, master. Oh, Chen Jin's eyes dulled and he laughed at himself. It was a furniture factory, what kind of high-tech information was I expecting to find in there? If he could find a heavy industrial factory or an armament factory etc., he could definitely reap great rewards. Therefore, he still had to increase the pace of his exploration of the outer areas. However, only the road leading to the city of Teres from the eastern highway could be passed without obstacles. Continuing on the highway towards the south, there was a highway bridge that was destroyed by war and thus impassable. Coming out of the city of Teres, within several miles to the north was the scene of a major vehicular accident. The highway was jammed full of various models of run-down cars. As the congestion lasted more than 10 kilometers, the road was totally impassable. Dali said, about 120 kilometers from the north of the city of Teres lies a mid-sized city called Fort Worth. It had a population of over 500,000. The cars jammed on the highway to the north could have came from Fort Worth. This was because the huge crater that Chen Jin was standing in now used to be a major emergency shelter. When war arrived, people from the surrounding areas fled in this direction. Fort Worth City? Population of 500,000. The words cash cow popped up in Chen Jin's mind. And a big one, too. He developed the idea and impulse to go Fort Worth City and scour the city. However, the highway was jammed and impassable. He could follow the highway by taking the flat desert ground beside it. But it would be difficult for Blue Angel's low chassis, it could easily break down halfway or meet with other troubles. Chen Jin's gaze came to rest on a large agricultural vehicle similar to a combine harvester. As the city of Teres was an agriculture-based city, it had plenty of large machinery for its farms. They were big, with a high chassis that was ideal for driving through the wilderness. After a series of modifications, they would be more suitable for the exploration of this planet. Chen Jin planned to restore one of the agricultural machines and assign it as the expedition vehicle for the exploration of this world. But to remodel it into an expedition vehicle was something that required a high level of technical skills. Chen Jin normally had no interest or experience in cars. He only had a superficial knowledge in repairing cars. If he was to remodel a farm machine into an expedition vehicle, would he not just be working blind? Naturally, he could get the medical robot, Dabao, to assist him. But Dabao's specialty was in servicing and repairing the robots, it was not too good at remodeling a vehicle. At most, it could only keep itself occupied with busy work. Chen Jin still had to do the primary work himself. The problem was that Chen Jin did not have the knowledge either. What to do? Of course, he had to learn how to repair cars. It would not be necessary to master the skill, some basic skills for a beginner would suffice. As luck would have it, Chen Jin had a friend who was simply a demon at remodeling cars. There was no car that he could not remodel, no faults that he could not repair. Chen Jin planned to seek his help by apprenticing himself for a few days and learning some technical skills on repairing a car. On the second day, at an automobile market in the west of the city, there was an auto sales service center named Belief of the Light. Zhao Xian, this is the $5,000 that I borrowed from you last month. I'm returning it. Retrieving half a stack of red-colored bills, Chen Jin presented them to a young man who had a cigarette dangling from his mouth and hands covered with engine oil, yet his hairstyle remained on point. The initial impression he gave was carefree, uninhibited, handsome, and easily stylish. The bad boy vibe that he exuded, together with a slightly nefarious smirk held a fatal charm for some women. It was said that women over 30 years old accounted for a third of the car sales in this service center. Some bought more than one car. Why did those women like to buy cars so much from this auto center? The reasons remained totally unknown. The boss of this auto sales service center was Zhao Xian, who was Chen Jin's classmate for three years of high school. In addition, they went to the same university and had a solid friendship. In other words, his good bro Zhao Xian was the only close friend that he could rely on and trust with total confidence. Zhao Xian's family background was way better than Chen Jin's. His parents owned a big corporation and he himself was worth trillions. Under his skillful management, this auto sales service center that he started had annual profits in the tens of millions, essentially making him a nouveau riche. Due to his expert skills in both remodeling and racing cars, his nickname Big Brother Xian was famous in the underground racing world. Looking at the bills in front of him and shaking his head, 
Zhao Xian said, Why are you returning this? It's just five thousand dollars. Don't return it, I don't need this spare change. I still have to return it even if it's fifty cents. Hurry and take it. Calling over Xiao Li at the front desk, Zhao Xian ordered her to take the money away. Xiao Li, take the money and book a high-class hotel. I will treat everyone to dinner today. Hooray, boss. Hooray, big brother Xian. The staff in the auto center instantly rejoiced, their morale greatly boosted. Chen Jin shook his head in impatience. He had known Zhao Xian for seven to eight years and his nature was still the same. He was unwilling to come into contact with money and regarded it as dirt. As he had no concept of money, the tens of millions in annual profits were frequently squandered. But he could not have treated the staff in his auto center any better. Some of the master repair technicians stayed working in the center for a few years. Other auto sales service centers could not lure them away even with an annual salary in the millions. Sometimes they were lured away but they always returned after a short time. It was the strangest thing. After returning his money, Chen Jin stated his purpose in coming over. He wanted to be his apprentice for a few days to learn some skills in car repair and service. You want me to teach you how to repair cars? Zhao Xian looked at him in shock. Taking away the cigarette tip at the corner of his lips, he asked rather sternly, Are you sure you are not joking with me? Since when were you this interested in repairing cars? Nodding his head, Chen Jin replied, I'm not joking. I really do want to learn something about repairing cars. This work is not easy. It's dirty and tiring, are you sure you want to learn? Yeah, I plan to be around and really learn something for a few days. I can pay a fee to learn. Zhao Xian waved his hand and said, You don't have to pay a school fee. Since you're interested, just come over and learn for a few days. We'll teach you hand-ons. If you can't take the hardship, you can give up any time and just treat it as a life experience. Okay, thanks Zhao Xian. Smiling blandly, Zhao Xian looked at Chen Jin with his pale skin and skinny physique. He knew that Chen Jin had homebody syndrome. Thinking silently in his mind, he wondered how long he would last. Two days? Three days? Or even just one day? In any case, there was no way this fellow could persevere for more than five days. Chapter 25, Zhang Nan In the auto repair garage, Chen Jin began learning from Zhao Xian the skills needed to repair a car. Actually many faults in a car don't require the major hassle of changing parts. A few simple fixes would do the trick. For example, stones are lodged in the tire tread, causing an overly loud friction noise. But, the stones are hard to extract. The next best method to reduce the noise is not to change the tires, but to simply install a sound deadening foam inside the tires. It would solve the problem just as well. When a car engine vibrates vigorously when it is started, it's probably due to a lack of power from misfiring engine cylinders. This is caused by either carbon buildup or an aging ignition system. It only requires a run at high speed or a change of spark plugs. It could be difficult to start your car in the winter. This is usually caused by a low battery voltage. Prepare a basin of hot water and pour it over the battery to increase its temperature. Once the car starts, immediately drive to a repair shop to get the battery checked. Throughout his learning, Zhao Xian left nothing out. He imparted much valuable experience and many clever techniques. Chen Jin listened with utmost seriousness. He nodded his head repeatedly, feeling that he had learned a lot. In the meantime, he also raised his own questions. Zhao Xian, do you think that electric cars could ever replace petrol cars? Um. No. At least not in the present. There are still some flaws with the electric car that puts it in an inferior position as compared to the petrol car. Petrol cars will still be around for at least another 50 years. Didn't you say that the composition of the electric car is simple? It can do without the complicated oil circuit and traditional system, also making the gearbox unnecessary. It's also easier to fix than the petrol car and has a better acceleration ability. With the exception of a troublesome charging process, all other points are to its advantage. Zhao Xian shook his head. The car is a tool to harness and manage speed. Its convenience lies in its ability to start and accelerate at any time. The electric car does not possess this advantage. It has a slow charging process and is not able to travel continuously for long distances. People who really understand automobiles will not favor electric vehicles. Chen Jin asked, what if the battery of the electric car has a higher efficiency than gasoline? 
and it's also paired with a quick charging system that can result in a full charge within 15 minutes. What do you think about this kind of electric car? Holding a tool, Zhao Xian abruptly halted the movements of his hands. After a period of silence, he said, then it's the future. A future where all petrol-based cars will become obsolete. Chen Jin also put down the socket spanner in his hands and said, Zhao Xian, is there a mentor in this center who knows how to fix electric cars? I want to learn from him how to repair them. Zhao Xian was surprised and looked at him with a strange expression. You don't think that electric cars can immediately replace petrol-based cars right? As I've said, it will take at least 50 years for that to happen. Also, the number of electric cars registered within our country is less than 1 million. If you're only learning how to repair electric cars, you'll starve to death. I'm not trying to make a living from this. I'm just more interested in electric cars and want to have a greater understanding of it. All the cars in higher 4 ran on electricity. It would obviously be a mismatch of the skills required if Chen Jin learned how to fix internal combustion cars. Glancing at him, Zhao Xian said impatiently, OK, mentor son is an expert in fixing electric cars. Follow and learn from him. In his heart, he thought, repairing electric cars is a much easier process. Is Chen Jin trying to slack off? Mentor son was a spry middle-aged man. Zhao Xian let him lead Chen Jin to an adjacent garage where the electric cars were repaired so that he could start learning how to repair them. Vroom! Vroom vroom vroom! A red sports car with a scarred, deformed body including a rear bumper full of dents came rushing into the garage. Screech! Just as it was about to hit someone, it suddenly braked. The red sports car drifted for half a meter and firmly stopped in front of its audience. A young man wearing hip-hop style clothing and ears full of studs stepped out from the car. His expression was rebellious and flamboyant. Same old rules. Repair this Ferrari champion warrior. Yesterday, it won me yet another victory. Brother Xian, since you stopped racing cars, I've already won three races as the race king. As he spoke, the young man rushed towards Zhao Xian, who was attentively fixing a car. Zhao Xian remained unmoved as he continued to be engrossed in his work. The staff of the auto center crowded around the young man. Brother Singh, you took down another race king. The prize for taking down a race king is one million dollars. So, brother Singh, you earned another dollar one comma zero 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 comma zero zero zero. A female staff with pretty looks leaned over, brother Singh, when will you take me to experience it? I can be your lady when you chase the wines. Brother Singh, I have a wooling Hong Guang, but I want to learn from you how to race cars. Such expressions came from the crowd surrounding him. The man called Brother Singh was really enjoying this. Sitting on the hood of his car, he began to brag. It's not a problem if you want to learn how to race cars from me. But if you want to be the lady to my wind chaser, you'll have to give me a kiss first. He leaned his face towards the female staff and enjoyed a sweet kiss. Looking over again at Zhao Xian who was still repairing his car, he raised his voice. Actually, if you want to talk about racing skills, Brother Xian is the undisputed champion. But since he does not do street racing, S-curve speeding, or drifting anymore, he hasn't participated in our competitions for three months. Brother Xian, let's go for a race. Everyone misses you so much. It's impossible to hold a proper underground race competition without you. How would I even win the title as race king? Towards the end, Brother Singh's tone became pleading as he eagerly beseeched. Zhao Xian was the soul of the underground car races. With him around, Numerous expert racers would be drawn to the races. Even those from abroad would come to seek out his name. Each race would be extremely exciting and got one's adrenaline pumping. But without Zhao Xian around, the underground races had quieted down within a mere three months to the point where there were only ten or so participants who were racing only to amuse themselves. Even someone like Brother Singh, who possessed only average skills, could win the title of Race King three times. One could imagine how pathetic the races had become. Tang Singh, can you shut your mouth and stop trying to sway my husband? An angry voice could be heard. The audience turned their heads, and Tang Xing quickly shut his mouth. The staff dispersed at once as they rapidly went back to their positions. The lady boss was here. That's right. Even though Zhao Xian was only 25, he was a married man. Moreover, he married straight after graduating from university. To date, he had been married for almost four years. Actually, there was a twist in the middle of this story. 
Zhao Xian got a girlfriend while he was attending university, and they had very good relationship going on. His girlfriend was very pretty too and was publicly acknowledged as the top beauty within campus. In addition, she had a good personality and character. They were a match made in heaven and was a couple envied by all in the university. Immediately after graduation, both decided to register their marriage as the relationship was going very well. They wanted to live their lives together in the sweetness of love and be each other's forever after. There was a bit of a cock up in the end. Zhao Xian did not marry his girlfriend, the bride became someone else. It was because after knowing that he was from a very rich family, Zhao Xian's future in laws increased the bride price at the last minute. They made voracious demands. The original betrothal gifts were $500,000 in a car. Now they wanted $5 million in a house. The $5 million was for the parents as a show of filial piety and the house was for her younger brother to use as his marital home after he got married. Met with such ridiculous demands, it was thought that she would refuse on Zhao Xian's behalf. Unexpectedly, she did not speak one word in protest. On the contrary, she even tried to persuade Zhao Xian to acquiesce to her parents' demands. She was firmly on her parents' side. At this moment, the wedding ceremony was about to begin. Zhao Xian's family was facing a full turnout of guests without the bride present. It was undoubtedly a huge blow to his family. It seemed as if they were about to lose face in a big and public way. Seconds turned into minutes and the bride's family still refused to budge in their demands. Zhao Xian was extremely displeased. It was not that he could not bear to part with $5 million in a house, but that he he could not stand their greed for riches. The way they tried to take advantage of him was too ugly and disgusting. He even had the impulse to just leave and call off the wedding. At this time, Chen Jin, who was acting as his groomsman made a suggestion which made Zhao Xian's eyes light up. Zhang Nan lives near here. She's been secretly in love with you for six years. Why don't you propose to her and let her be your bride to complete this wedding ceremony? Chen Jin was acquainted with Zhang Nan and knew that she always had feelings for Zhao Xian. Otherwise, why would she apply to an inferior vocational university when her grades were in the top three in school? Fine, I don't want this woman anymore. I want to marry Zhang Nan. That afternoon, just before the start of the wedding ceremony, Zhao Xian and Chen Jin took the bridal car and sped to Zhang Nan's home. There, they saw Zhang Nan, who had been crying in misery for a long time. Opening the door, Zhao Xian, who was decked out in his bridegroom's clothing, got down on one knee and presented a diamond ring. He proposed to her and asked, Zhang Nan, will you marry me? Zhang Nan was in great shock. After understanding the situation, she started crying tears of joy, and shouted, Yes, I will. The wedding proceeded smoothly. After the wedding ended, the girlfriend and her family got wind of the fact that the bride was another woman. At that point, they started screaming to the high heavens as they lost their minds collectively. The entire family acted as if they were mentally ill. Thus they became the well-known laughing stock in their locale and were the butt of many jokes. And Zhang Nan was now married to Zhao Xian as husband and wife. She married the love who she most wanted. Undoubtedly, Zhang Nan was very grateful to Chen Jin who had made great efforts in this entire process. Privately, she gave him a $50,000 red packet, which was the biggest one of all. When she normally met Chen Jin, she was also very well-mannered and affectionate towards him. Spotting Chen Jin in the car repair garage, Zhang Nan came over to greet him. Hey, Chen Jin, what are you doing here? Holding a spanner with hands full of engine oil, Chen Jin wiped the sweat on his head and replied, Oh, hey sister, I became more interested in fixing cars recently so I came over to understand more about it. Zhang Nan said with a smile, All right, stay here for lunch and have a taste of my cooking skills. She was not a girl with outstanding features, her looks could only be average. However, her smile was very appealing and made her feel extremely amiable. According to Zhao Xian, her dishes were very delicious, on par with the national top chefs. Hum Chen Jin nodded his head. After chatting for a bit, he could not help but voice his question, Sis, I heard from the person out there that Zhao Xian had not been racing for three months. Didn't he become so skilled in modifying cars just for the purpose of racing? Why doesn't he race now? Zhao Xian was addicted to cars. Why would his nature suddenly change? Um, Zhang Nan blushed. As she was about to speak, a surge of acid rose up her throat. Abruptly, she clutched her stomach and dry retched. Chen Jin seemed to have understood something. Sis, you. She nodded, 
replying, it's been three months. Zhao Xian is about to become a father. Pursing her lips in a smile, she flushed red in happiness. So it's like that. All at once, Chen Jin understood. 